Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Welcome to the Midweek War! I've never had to warm up with an intro like that. My God. <laughs> or, as it's more commonly known, Carson. La Guerra de la Mitad de la Semana! Yes! Oh my God, ladies and germs. Fans and friends, believers, non-believers, masters, lucha skeletors, everyone, it's 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 time to talk Lucha Underground, Ultima Lucha, season three finale. I'm Mad Mike. Y'all don't give a fuck about me. You know why I'm here. <laughs> With me, as always, is the one only Sorgatron. How are you, sir? I am here in the lovely Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview. PA, I mean, it was so hot. The cops were already here. Two cops were here uh, escorting mainstream Matt into the studio, and then they towed his car away. So that we're going to have to sort out later. That is because he is a um, an accessory <laughs> in a murder that has happened, and it is very sad. That's why I'm wearing black. Um, um, uh, it, but, it's it's but, pro wrestling. We're wearing black every week, Mike. <laughs> Sorg, that is the reason I have another Lucha Underground shirt. Oh. I chose to wear the black one. Oh, is this the morning shirt? Yes. This is the morning in the evening shirt. Oh. oh. <laughs> yes, the evening in the morning shirt is actually no shirt. <laughs> Ladies. Yes, we have a rule um, about that. But but we have the whole crew here. We have mainstream Matt Sorg. Holy crap. There he is right on the couch. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, you know this was a good episode of Lucha Underground because I have no freaking clue what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. And fortunately, uh, we've got someone who has some answers. Yes, but before we get to the answer man himself, we have... Wait, hold on. We heard Spanish before, Sorg. Does that mean Antonio Garza's back? What? Yes! Tantos, tantos meses desde que no estoy aquí con ustedes. I am so happy to be back. Ah. Oh, Garza, we missed you. I miss somebody who actually knows how to say those words. <laughs> <laughs> See, Sorg, Sorg knows I know how to say those words, too. I just don't say them as sexually as Garza does. No, no, no. He's had more practice than you. <laughs> this is a fair point. Yes. And, um, and our, we, this would not be a Lucia Underground finale special without our very special guest, honorary co-host of the show, co-executive producer of Lucha Underground, and the provider of exceptional mugs, Krista <laughs> Joseph, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys. Thanks for having me here. Uh, super excited to talk with uh, you guys. It's like J.J. Dillon and the Four Horsemen tonight. We got the full group, and uh, we're ready to go. Dibs on Tully. Dibs on Tully. <laughs> He's the best, for sure. Dibs on Tully. <laughs> Dibs on Mongo Mc McMichael. I have well, I have low expectations oh, for I'm, myself. I, I, I'm Paul. I'm Paul Roma. You're Paul Roma. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty Paul Roma. Pretty Paul Roma. Oh man. All right. Well. Um. All right. You know, I, I need to know this because maybe the last time we get to do this for a while. So Sorg. Oh, Wallace to Palabra, para Lucha Underground, Ultima Lucha Trace. As has been my word for the entirety of Ultima Lucha, <laughs> uh, blood. <laughs> <laughs> Just blood. When I think there's not going to be any more blood, they bring blood from new places I didn't expect blood. And they did it on this one. I witnessed, I literally witnessed something I have never seen in professional wrestling on video or in person. Wow. And I'm not okay. sure I want to see it again. <laughs> I I think I know what you're talking about, and I definitely want yes, to see it again. Yes, a friend uh, of the show has a, has a wonderful image with the, these items in his forehead, I believe. So, But we'll get to that uh -huh. in a moment. All right. Um, Matt, qual es tu palabra para Lucha Underground? Uh, I'll see your blood, and I'll give you <laughs> death! Death, Sorg! <laughs> oh, we're taking all the good ones. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. I, I, have, I have a good one. Um, all right, Go Garza. 
Garza. Down to you. Uh, specifically <laughs> to one little yellow uh, flippy guy. Adios. Oh, <laughs> yellow flippy guy. Yellow flippy Vaya guy. Vaya con Dios. What is this? The, what is this? The two hundred five live recap. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. And, and uh, me palabra. S. Cages. Cages. Ooh, Cages. Cause yeah, we, okay. Because we started in a cage. We followed up with a cage. And then it's Lucha Underground's version of Johnny Cage. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I, Chris, do you have a word for Lucha Underground season for Ultima Lucha three? I have. I have. I have two. Is that okay? okay? Can I do that? Can I break the rules? Uh, you know what? Sure. Sure, I can. But rules. I hold on. Hold on. <laughs> to quote, to quote a great man, <laughs> rules. Like bones, <laughs> were made to be broken. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. <laughs> so my, my 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 first one is bang, and uh, my last one is is cuerno, cuerno. Oh, cuerno. Yeah. You know that yeah. that's Casadora. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a deer there. That's tequila. Yeah. Somebody was pre gaming. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> I came prepared. Oh man. Um I, okay. I just I just want to say I'm really disappointed that rotary dial phone is not one word because that would have been my choice for <laughs> You could have just done rotary. I don't know if it would have gone over. <laughs> uh all right. Um well oh it's it's gonna be hard. Uh Sorg Do you have do you have a bueno? What that I, I washed it. Just that <laughs> this that I got through it. Just that 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 there was a point where, again, I saw something in wrestling, and it's been a long time this has happened, where I'm like, oh shit, did they just do that? <laughs> and I don't even know whether the, the, the uh, but but my, my word was gonna be hammer, by the way. Um, when when uh, Sammy uh, <laughs> uh, Jeremiah uh, took what what are those that he he stuck in Cage's head? So oh, those skewers. are sh- shish kebab skewers. Those shish kebab skewers. Okay. Yeah. Because I've seen, the only time I've seen them is from the image from our friend G Raver, because he's been doing those death matches with VOW in, in West Virginia. That's my awareness of those, right? And then I just saw them get pulled out on, on, on primetime television. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> it is the most death match thing <laughs> that I think has ever happened. On on cable television it has to be right, and, and I'm just. And I, think, still... I, think, I think my favorite thing about that is that he kept it in line with Cage's mohawk. Oh yeah, that was that was really nice. <laughs> it, it, really like nice. It, it, it enhanced Cage's mohawk, which is cool. <laughs> I was all for the skewers, and then the DDT. I kind of cringed. It got a little. Oh yeah. Ass. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. there was there was there was like oh he, that's it on his head. Oh you see that bleeding, and then and then he does a DDT. I'm like oh god he's gonna kill him. Yeah, I thought oh, we were, no. thought they were about to do the pencil trick from Dark Knight. Right, you know, <laughs> it kind of is. It's kind of the wrestling version of the pencil it's trick. Scary, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, real yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I did like, okay. I, like there was no real uh, allusion to it. It's just like all of a sudden you see just just coming out from under the ring. Crane's got this this handful of sticks, and I'm just like, oh Jesus, are we going here? Yeah, yeah, we went there. <laughs> yes, yes, we did. Yeah, no, no, no. For me, it was like, what are those? What are those for? What is he going to do with? Oh God! <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this right, is, um, and, and it took a lot to kind of get me going because this is between like a couple of my shoots today, so I was pretty like ragged at the time I was watching it, I'm, and I was just like yelling at my television in my house. And, <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it got me going pretty good. Uh, all right, uh, so Matt, qual es tu qual es tu bueno? Oh yes, uh, well, I mean, my good is kind of a, a throwback to uh, my good might have been my good at the end of uh, season one, but if it wasn't, it definitely w- was a contender. And it was seeing that uh, final frame that just said to be continued. I mean, the premise, however strong it may be, of, of, of wanting more and, and, th- and the hope of wanting more and the hope of a season four and um, getting at least the suggestion that we want to give you more um, is definitely something that uh, makes me happy to see. Because, I mean, I got to be honest, Chris, I'm sitting here and, and I was, you know, before I sat down to watch the final, uh, the final night, I was yeah. I thought we were going to sit down here, and I thought this might be a little bit bittersweet. But um, seeing that kind of uh, re uh, restored my hope that there will be more to come. <laughs> good, good, good. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, um, Garza, ¿cuál es tu bueno? Uh, my bueno is um, after two seasons and a half, about that two seasons and a half, my boy Pentagon Dark finally captured the title. Like, this is a man that I love. Like, this is a man whose skin, whose mask is oh, gray. Wow. My skin. Yeah. Whoa. And finally, finally, he captures the title. So that, that was like my, my main thing of the whole season. And I'm so happy for him. All right. Um, well, I got to go. Um, my, my bueno. Um, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> All, cheating. All, no, yeah. right, it, it, you're right. It is cheating. Um, I will say, oh, you know, no, actually, I know exactly what it is. We got to see Taya's documentary. Oh, yes. That's <laughs> what a that, fine. I was, I was hoping. I was hoping that we would get to see it because it was like, ah, uh, it, it, it was an excellent palate cleanser. Mm -hmm. It was the best. <laughs> It was the best palate cleanser because the best way to clean someone's palate is off of an eight pack. That's what I've been told anyway. That or fine champagne. And I think either one it could be compared to. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> by, by the way, Chris, did I tell you that my ringtone is Welcome to Slam Town? That's pretty <laughs> awesome. So is yeah. mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay, uh, but not every show is perfect. I didn't, I didn't get to go to a play. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm, I, okay, I, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> I, I just assumed we would try and get through the logistics of this real quick so we could just gush about it. But, uh, <laughs> Chris, I, I, I think it's fun. I used gush on a word that had so much blood. Uh, Chris, qual es tu bueno? My bueno is... Prince Puma. That's my bueno. Prince Whoa. Puma. Yeah. Prince. Oh. Hey, there That's it is. <laughs> Was that picked up off the temple floor? Yes, I, I, I have props everywhere tonight. I'm like carrot top this evening. So <laughs> it's on. Yes, that's but, my bueno, Prince Puma. By the way, I'm reading it to everything. You basically just told us carrot top is the big boss, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. Who do, who do you think is supplying the carrots to the rabbit tribe? <gasps> Oh fuck me! Uh, see the rabbit. <laughs> if if Carrot Top is the white rabbit, I will officially declare Lucha Underground the greatest show in the history of television. Like well, Mash, fuck off. Well, Cheers, go to hell. Lucha Underground. Get ready, Mike. Get ready. <laughs> oh jeez. Okay, but not not every show is perfect. We, we like to you know curb curb everyone a little bit. Sorg. Do you have a mallow? Oh, oh, yeah, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> I'm not, I, I thought we were just I, gonna gush. Wait, I mean, <laughs> we have literally done this over a hundred times. There, okay, okay, okay. My mallow, my mallow. There might have been too much blood <laughs> <laughs> because because I kind of OD'd on death matches at a, at a certain point in my my wrestling watching career, and it 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 reminded me of that, and it gave me flashbacks to that. And all those like JCW shows at the gathering, so it was just so winceworthy. But that's kind of why it was awesome too. So, but yeah, no, it was just a lot of like, oh shit, they're doing this, and 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 you know, and, and like I said, that DDT, you're just like kind of worrying about people at that point. So, yeah, not the class, <laughs> not the uh, you know, all the other crazy shit that happens, but yeah, at that point, I was yeah. gonna say you weren't OD during the Hell of War match. Oh jeez, because <laughs> I mean, that's like that's like the adrenaline shot in Pulp Fiction. Like, oh, my God, it was, <laughs> and then you got a new one every week. Uh, it was it was crazy. It was it all was right. insane. All right, uh, Matt, do you have a Malo for this week? Ah. Uh. I mean, do I have to come up with one? I don't want to be mean. Um, <laughs> um, all right, I, I, all right, I, I'll, I'll go here. Hold on, hold on, because it was it was just called out in the chat room about the cute puppy in the background. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, so speaking of palate cleanser, as we're talking about the most violent show in pro wrestling history on television, check out that puppy in the background, guys. Come here, come here. This is Murphy. This is Murphy. Murphy loves lucha. <laughs> Hashtag lucha pup. <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm sorry matt go ahead all right uh, well, all right here's here, here's where i'll go and, and and you know oh my god just said chris picking up that dog by the scrub was like oh good dog um it, it, look it, it, 
there was like an seemingly endless conveyor belt of surprise returns on this uh, final night of Lucha oh Underground God, yes. to the point where I'm like, maybe there were too many people returning on one night. <laughs> <It> maybe felt- <laughs> that maybe we needed to break. I'm just saying, felt- just, just saying, Chris, you had all these folks. You had like Black Lotus and Angelico and Jim King Cuerno just just hanging out. I mean. You know, I could have, I would have liked to have seen Angelico like a month ago, or I would have liked to seen Cuerno <laughs> pop in a month ago. I just don't know why we all had to wait and just get them all at once. You know, it's just like if that was possible, I obviously we would have done something like that, but it wasn't possible. I mean, you have to understand the way the the schedule was, the mm-hmm. tapings, yeah, like yeah. everything had to work out. The availability of the talent, it was. Uh, it's more complicated than than you know you would hope, and and like a lot of times you want this dream scenario where everybody's available. I mean, Angelica was hurt pretty much right up to the finale. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, as far as Daga goes, like as far as getting his issues handled, that really came kind of right up to the wire. Um, I don't even know who else returned. Everybody. Uh, Querno. Yeah, Querno. Quer- Querno yeah. was kind of the same thing. He had had back surgery and. Um, Jeez. Oh shit. Yeah. So uh, th- and we taped season three really in like three months. Like it was. Yeah. An insane pace to do forty episodes. It was nuts trying to keep <laughs> track of everything, and we taped so many things out of order because of the you know talent availability and things like that that it kind of became crazy. So that's the only reason probably why it happened but i think it happened for the best i mean it's the last show it's it's our big show of the year it's our final show of the season like we're just gonna throw it all against the wall i i, I thought the returns were fantastic <laughs> hey i'm not I, complaining I, I, i'm just yeah you know i i part of me is like who all came back in that episode i'm starting to make a list i'm like starting to forget like it felt very ecw at the end when like everybody interrupted that match too <laughs> like it was just a little bit you're like oh i remember this from like one night stand you know like, like that kind of thing. So I, I really dug that kind of vibe. Well, yeah, I mean, those guys have been interrupting matches the whole season. Yeah. Uh, they've been, you know, and we thought like, oh, it'd be great for them to, they have to come in. They have to try to do something. And then to kind of have everything kind of settle, you know, have, have basically the war settle down, every, everything clears. And then you're left with your two guys, the, the, the protagonist and the antagonist who have been going at it for three years. So kind of cleared the air and, and we got down to business between the two guys yeah that i thought that was well done just want to say um okay uh so so garza qual is to malo if you have one for this for ultima lucha i have one it's a, it's like a petty complaint but uh <laughs> aren't they all though at this point <laughs> yeah they, they really are because <laughs> I mean, it's not really bad it's just like i want i wanted more out of it <laughs> um i fought the la- the three matches that we had in the last two episodes, technically, uh, the, the finale, they were all main event worthy. So every time we finish one match, I was like, I just want to like focus on this match and the aftermath. But then I had to like completely just get ready and my mindset into, okay, now it's the three way for the gauntlet. And then that finishes and I'm thinking like, oh man, like Quirino's back and what's, what's happening with Katrina and all that stuff. And then, oh wait, I need to focus my head and go into the main event so yeah i kind of just want to like technically three more episodes <laughs> <laughs> so did i <laughs> yeah. and i guess uh, do i get to give mine well i i have mine first oh and... oh 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 sorry <laughs> and um chris chris yes. mimalo you killed off Dario Cueto. Hey! Hey! Hi. Wait! 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 Don't did, know yet. Did he? I know. I know. But I have to react. Like, did he? <laughs> it's it's like when you watch a cartoon and and you see like, oh no, did he? Re-? Like, you have to overreact. It's he it's. it's a, I was explaining what happened to somebody earlier today. I was like, they did this because it's somebody that doesn't watch re- the wrestling, and I explained like. You know that we were doing this interview tonight. Oh yeah, this program is really great, and 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 they had this finish. And it was like who shot Jr. Except we completely know who shot Jr. This time, <laughs> and it was comedian Godfrey. Yes. <laughs> okay, I didn't get to that part. They might have knew that part. So, uh, no, but like, and I thought it was a very cool scene. Mm. But if if Dario is really gone, I don't think he is. If he is. That's I, I feel like that's a detriment to the show. I don't think he's going to be gone <laughs> because we, we've seen people resurrect legitimately every season. So 
I'm not too concerned, but I'm a little concerned. Yeah, I mean that's 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 the thing about Lucha Underground is that there have been resurrections, but then other people have not been resurrected. So, you know, um, people have things going on in their lives. They have you know other career paths. So we'll see what happens. I mean, you never know. <laughs> Yeah, like I'm relatively sure Pindar is not coming back. Now, I was just about to ask, how are you going to bring relatively back Pindar? Sure. How are we bringing I mean, back Pindar? No, I mean, we could easily just reattach his head. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lizard. They tend to grow back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I expect a headless oh, Pindar to fight on, for at least the on. next first half of next Garza. season. Garza for the win. <laughs> we, could, we could get dual Pindars. Mm hmm. <laughs> Because they, you can have one grow the head back and the head grow a body back. It wasn't sacrifice. It's like a much it, smaller body, it so you don't have to get two stocky guys. It wasn't sacrifice. Yeah, it, it was growth. It could be mini Pindar. Yeah. I got to throw this Ooh. in from the chat room. <laughs> Robert just chimed in. Nobody stays dead except for Uncle Ben. So Aww. it's good left good and lesson they, for all you writers out there. Level. What? That makes me sad on a different level. That, that's a truth, man. All right. I know. I'm a Spider-Man fan. That makes me sad. Well, I, right, that's um, why I so, thought it would hit home for you. See, I thought it would be a good thing. All right. So, so Chris, uh, Koala is too malo. Uh, to me, I think there was a lot of things that didn't make it into the finale because the finale, there was so much content. Um, there were moments that were built into the show that were like Puma and Johnny moments to build to the match. There was um, – a little bit time, some things that got taken out that I wish we could have kept in. But in the end, I'm very happy with everything. But that's my one little nitpick, but I nitpick everything. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of drives me crazy. That's my one mall that, that you guys didn't even know was a mall because you didn't know. But to me, <laughs> it was. But, you know, that's what happens when you got, I mean, the matches and, and, and the vignettes and everything were just, like, crazy good, and you had to have them in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. the the vignette spe the vignette spectacular at the end was just as it always is on Lucha. It was just fucking balls out ridiculous. Um, all right, Sorg, as we do here, Qualis to Cambia. What would you change about? Oh. I know it's tough. Oh jeez. Um, I I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I honestly don't even know uh, what I would change about that. I'm still thinking so you about have, it. Again, so you I have, only saw it a so few hours no ago. I, I have know. no changes. So you, so you have no change. <laughs> I have okay. you know, the usual, like, can the next season come next week? That That's fair. Damn to be continued. We don't know what we're going to do on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Matt, how about you? Qualis to Cambio. All right, I got a Cambio. Uh, this is super nitpicky. Well, maybe not too much, though. All right, so um, you have the match with um, El Dragon Azteca and um, Matanza. Dario's out there looking fly in his tuxedo. As he uh, does. Gets his all ripped up, staggers away, go to break. Come back from break, Dario magically, magically back in his all black. I mean, yeah, I he, assume he's he got does. a wardrobe set up in his office there, but it seemed like a little bit of an inconsistency in the uh, wardrobe department. He changed period. to his normal his normal outfit that he wears because his tuxedo was ruined. All right. Do you think? I mean, in my opinion, if I'm Dario Cueto, I would never go out in public looking like that. Personally, I would go out looking as fly as possible. So that's why he had to change change the game a little bit. Go I, back I was, to his go back to his original threads. He probably put on that tuxedo while having a cocktail in his office earlier in the day. He tied his tie. Did a line of blow, got all set up. <laughs> see, see, the weird thing is, I expected to see I, him I in the Dario in the ripped up tuxedo almost, for the rest of the night. I thought Dario almost looked more badass with the ripped shirt and just a key hanging from his neck with the bare chest. Like, I was like, I will never look half that badass in my life, and I could kill a cheetah and still would not look that badass. Like, I don't know. It was, it was I thought it was a good look. He's a man of class and grandeur, and like I don't, you know, I just think you know James Bond would would change. That's yeah, that's fair. yeah fair enough. All right. Uh, also, also, spoiler: Dario Cueto is going to become the new James Bond when Daniel no, Craig is done. I take my money. Uh, that's a spoiler. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Garza. How about you? Qualis to Cambio. Uh, it's a small change. Uh, during the Mundo and and Puma, no, actually, it was during the Pentagon and, and Puma match. Uh, when Vampiro finally 
uh, decides to show his allegiance and pull Pentagon. And we had Stryker just like go fucking crazy on the bureau. Like he was pissed off. I, I would have liked, uh, I guess, a bit more visual of that part of Vampiro and Stryker just tearing each other up because these guys have been like, I mean, Stryker has been getting Vampiro's nerves more often. And I would have liked to see like just a visual of, of Stryker just pissed off. I don't know. I like that. It was a small change. I like that. I would probably make that change as well. Yeah, especially because like it, it, Striker's kind of he had kind of like the Jim Ross reaction. Yeah. Like, no, you yeah. son of a bitch. Like, like just it was really it was it was it was a little I liked it. It was good. But yeah, a visual that would have been cool. Um my my change I really would have had Cage win or not not win necessarily, but end up with the gauntlet. Just because I need to see who's in that fucking limo. <laughs> I need to see, like, I don't think it's the guy Vampiro was talking to at the end. No, Chris? No. Chris? Chris? <laughs> I don't fishing? Know. Fishing? I don't know. Eh? I don't he, know. Was, he wasn't smoking a cigar, so I don't know. That's a fair point, yeah. But there was smoke, so... Yeah, well, I mean, stop. there's always smoke. That's a that's just a smoky <laughs> temple. <laughs> that's just Boyle Heights. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I, I wanted to see... The smoke smells real good at at, at the temple, by the way. Oh, oh. All right, that's my other change. I want... Ask Sorg about that. Oh, there's smells. No, that's my other change, because you reminded me. My other change would have been for you guys to retroactively make a 4DX show in New York so I could have taken off work last night and go to see it there. Yeah. I don't care if I was the only one in the theater. I want to see it 4D in a theater. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! It was a 4D show, like when yeah! we, like when we saw Wonder Woman up there. Yeah. So, I want to know, so I want what, to know what Johnny Mundo smells like. No, 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 no! I want to know what happens when he sticks those skewers in the guy's head. You get sprayed. Yeah, you get oh, sprayed. Oh, you get sprayed. You got, got, <laughs> got sprayed with water. Oh no! Oh no! Yes! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> that's that's not okay. Like if that's I was, I was, okay, you know, I was queasy already. I, you, did you have anybody vomit at that point? Uh, some some people got car sick. I know Eric. Eric got, was telling. He turned to me and goes, "I think I'm getting a little car sick." And I was like. Oh. <laughs> like Come on, it's fine, dude. We'll be fine. We'll make it. We'll make it through. We'll but, but, but at that, but at that point, he had probably seen the show so many times that he just really was like, "God, I've seen the show way too many times. I don't want to be car sick watching it." So, yeah, it was it was a bumpy ride, especially with every like slam or every every suplex or everything. Oh. Like, you got you got jerked all around, and then for some reason, like these two things in the back just kept yep. like punching yep. you in the back. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Even when nobody was punching anybody, it was like, oh, two things would just punch me in the kidney or something like that, you know? So, yeah, it, it was it was strange, but it was cool. Yeah, we, we, we took Chachi up to, to see 4DX Wonder Woman because that's what was playing. And we're like, oh, let, we don't have those around here. Let's do that we're up in New York City. And in, I, I, at least there were breaks too, right? Like there was yeah. like things where we just stopped and there's dialogue for five minutes, right? This is wrestling for an hour and a half. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, I was hoping that like bubbles would have come out when Mundo came out, but they didn't do that. So I was oh, hear that? Where you just get like a huge gust of wind, so everyone has like the wind swept look. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think we need to. I want to retro. I want to go back. I want a re-release of Cerro Miedo in the the 40x. I want to see how you do the glass tube thing and just like. Yeah, where you just get throw covered confetti in confetti. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just fire it at the audience. Good times. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just like a JCW show. <laughs> Where again? Yeah, yeah. True. You, you can do like the Hell of War, and barbed wire comes out instead of those two things that punches you in the back and rips your back up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally okay. Sign yeah. a waiver. Sign a waiver. <laughs> and the, and there's actual explosions that go off in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez, if only. All right. Uh, so Chris, uh, Qualis to Cambio, Pada Ultima Lucha. 
This is the one thing I would uh, not change, or what is the thing I didn't yeah, like? What is the this? change? The change. My change would be I would have announced season four at the end of the damn show. <laughs> 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 you, you, went, you went a little Lucha <laughs> Underground <laughs> will return. El Razier. <laughs> I would have had like some kind of like crazy trailer, and boom, I would have done it. Gone right into it, and then I would have started taping uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so... Um, I, I think it's safe to say ratings this week. Lucha is like, is there something higher than one Sorg? Is uh, there, is there like, can we give it like, like, like Seto? <laughs> Miedo, maybe? Yeah, I think that's appropriate. Ah! I think that's appropriate. I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like I went there. I feel like I went there. Yeah, you Okay. Went. Um, okay. So let's just, let's, let's just break this the fuck down. Um, um fuck man <laughs> all right that was insane <laughs> that just that that whole season the whole ultima lucha i i feel like this was the best ultima lucha you guys have done me too yeah because yeah. ultima lucha too i remember there were some things that rubbed some people the wrong way i know it's i know it rubbed some of us the wrong way but i feel like this kind of righted a lot of those wrongs yeah, which I, which I think it was meant to do, and and we had always knew that we were going to right some of those wrongs, depending on which wrongs you're talking about. But uh, yeah, uh, for me, I, I I think it's by far the best Ultima Lucha for sure. Uh, what what was your personal favorite match on? Oh gosh, because um, I I, I, I I personally I I really like the Marty and Phoenix match. I I I've, you know to me. That that that's my favorite match, just because I, I really love the story. I, n- not not to say anything, I love the kill shot Dante thing. I love the Johnny and Puma thing, but I really love Marty and Phoenix, and I just thought with Melissa and with um, Mariposa and just everything that that was that was one of my favorites for sure. I, did, I I love those characters, and and it's just so much fun with them, especially Marty. He's a freaking maniac. <laughs> uh, how about uh, around the room? What was everyone's favorite match from Ultra Lucha? Oh, I got to say the hell of war. Like it, it set, it set a pace and, and, and I know it got like still ended up getting topped amazingly every episode, but that hell of war was the first unexpected thing. And it kind of lets you know, like, you're like, holy shit, how does it get crazier from here, from here? Right. Like it, it just, it just set an amazing bar. I think Uh, the, um, oh, oh, sorry. Um, I think, the Hella War match might be like the most hyped, personally hyped match to me in the history of my wrestling fandom. The Joseph has been being banging this drum over <laughs> Killshaw and Dante Fox literally for a year. I swear I've been hearing about this match. Um, so that's tough going in when you're like, this is the craziest, most effed up match I've ever seen. People were throwing up in the back and like in, in the production area. And like that, one could handle it. So, I, I mean, obviously, it was awesome. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say when when guys put their bodies on the line like that. Um, the the only tricky part is that like there was so much that came after it. So, I mean, me personally, I was totally down with Cage and Crane and uh, Mil Muertes. Wait, Those wait. three were that that three way match was awesome. Can I just put it aside just while I'm thinking of it for for that? You know. Uh, Cause I'm watching this and, and they went back for the glass like they did in hell of war in that yeah. same closet. And that supply closet. And then they, <laughs> somebody should put a lock on we that. We got to lock thing. this closet. Yeah. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was, that was kind of <laughs> well, a nice call. And Vamp's just like, yeah. well, we got to do what you got to do. Yeah. yeah Violence, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Uh, Garza, how about you? I mean, with all the talent, I, the one match that I had least uh, expectations like to be good was a, uh, it was Katrina versus Eolise, and that was my favorite. Oh, jeez. Actually, because yeah. that was like Paul Heyman 101, you know? Hide the, the bad things and just bring out, like, awesome things. And, like, when, when Katrina started breaking bottles, I, I was just like, holy shit, this is going to be bloody. This is going to be awesome. And it was short. It was concise. But it, ter- it told a perfect story. It was perfect to me. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been struggling which, with which match is my favorite because I, I love – the hell of war because like like matt said you you've been like this was the one you've been teasing us with for <laughs> so fucking long um 
but I want to say, I uh, I think I'm gonna have to go um, the uh, Phoenix and Marty match, just because I love seeing like it. It was Marty's been my favorite character of Lucha Underground this season, just because he he's so game for anything. It seems like like from having a lunchbox where he pulls out like scissors and shit like that, like just everything that he has. Or, or was it a fork? I, it was, I think it was a fork. He said both. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but like, just, just everything having to do with Marty the Moth and ultimately having Mariposa be the one to do him in in the end. Like, ah, uh, it was just really, really good. Like, that was, that was so much fun. Like, and plus, who doesn't love a mask versus hair match? Who doesn't love those kind of stakes? Who doesn't love that? Oh, God. Very right. classic. Um, geez. Uh, I don't even know where I go. Uh, Mike, Mike, of... Mike, can I? Yes. I so I, I, because I've had stuff burning in my head. I, I've let you know some go of this it. stuff, and, and I want to see if I can if I can do this. I want to ask two questions right off so, to see what I'm allowed to talk about here, Chris. Uh, sure. First of all, am I misremembering? Is there stuff that I witnessed at a taping that it was on the cutting room floor for sure and two, if we talk about it, do I break my NDA? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know what it is. I mean, okay. I, 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 I've heard you talk about it before on the show, and I, yeah. I, I, I don't really know what it is. is I, this a, think... I mean, it was a long – I mean, it was a, it was my first time at Boyle High, so maybe the fumes were getting to me and because <laughs> I've already misremembered a couple of things and, screw, and yeah, screwed up that it, 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 might, it might not have even happened. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay, what, what, did, <laughs> did my fever dream of seeing Ricardo Rodriguez in the audience – uh, occur or not <laughs> yes yes he was there he was in the audience okay. he came to see the show he came to see uh, the show oh, oh, yeah yeah he just came to see the show support everybody he came backstage to say hi he was okay in the, he was in the neighborhood and he came by because he you know he's a good dude okay okay and then i swear i watched the match cannot remember what the match is where uh, both uh, Vamp and, and, and Matt Stryker were, like, not at their announcer desk and they're just, like, cheering on whatever was going on, like, during the entire match and just kind of walking around ringside. Oh, did they get involved in the match? Is that the I feel like about? they did a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was just a dark match that we were just like, hey, let's have a ton of fun and just get everybody involved. Okay, and do okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there was one where, like, Matt, like, dropped some people and he got involved. And, yeah, that was really fun. I hope I, – I always hope that one day – like if Lucha continues, that we can just release all those like crazy dark, like some of the dark matches that we've done are like crazy, crazy, crazy stuff and and lots of fun and just stuff we're like experimenting with and just you know whatever. You know, well, it's, it's, I mean, feel free to send us those. I mean, we're gonna need, <laughs> we're gonna need content for this show. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I mean, I talked to Eric about it. And he's like, "Yeah, we, one day we'll release those." I'm like, "Yeah, man, that would be really cool Just for people like to a, see some of that stuff." It, it's like your own like after Raw DVD, right? Like, yeah, it's like, a, it's like some of the evolution of even like the gimmicks. I mean, like you know, Marty the Moth was a magician at one time. Like, <laughs> oh my uh, god! <laughs> oh my god! I want to see that version. Yeah, and, Bre and Brenda was his assistant. Oh, and uh, <laughs> wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Did he pull Paul London out of his hat? <laughs> he did not, but he once put a <laughs> he put a straight jacket on, and he said, "I guarantee you, I'm going to get out of this straight jacket." And he goes, "Brenda, no matter what you do, do not let me out of this. No matter what I say, no matter how hard I cry, <laughs> do not let me out of this straight jacket." And then Mil Muertes comes out, and he goes, "Get me out of the straight jacket!" You told me no. You told me no. Oh my god! Oh, that's amazing. I didn't yeah. see that. Shit! <laughs> and, oh my god, that's perfect. Oh. That's absolutely perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just happy to know that the heat wasn't getting to me in Boyle Heights that one time, and, and I'm not yeah. crazy for this. Yeah, like when we first taped the first few ones, yeah, not just the heat, but yeah, the uh, <laughs> I, I guess you, you didn't tailgate as hard as some of the others. No, what, no, I didn't tailgate, you? but I had a few. I had a few Coronas back there in VIP. Yeah, you, <laughs> so. you, you weren't out there drinking uh, mimosas or or. <laughs> oh, or <laughs> or uh, no modellos, or, or, no or modellos, yeah, no modellos or screwdrivers at like five o'clock in the morning in your tent that you slept in there the night before. Oh, <laughs> no. 
I mean, it's, it's that crazy there as far as, like, as the seasons progress, like, people would be there, like, a day and a half early, like, camping yeah, out. Yeah, that's what I mean, – they would have grill. They'd be like cooking breakfast in the morning. You know, I'd, I'd pull up in my car with a coffee, like half asleep, and somebody'd be like, "Hey, make a breakfast. You want some bacon or something?" I'm good. I'm good. It, it, it so, was yeah. it was funny because leading into it, like I'm reading all this stuff, and I know, like I sent you some questions. I'm like, dude, is it okay if I wear you know, like this something like this, or you know, you like, like stupid question, or like you're gonna take my cell phone, stuff like that? Because I was just reading all the reddits and everything on it, right? And then like yeah. I'm expecting this huge line that I'm gonna sit in for like five hours, and then I show up and there's nobody, and a dude hands me a ticket. I'm like. Oh, Oh, okay. Let's go find something to eat. <laughs> they, yeah, I mean, you were in the VIP, and the other people had already been there, and oh, they'd been yeah. there at like five o'clock in the morning, yeah. like when everybody when everybody pulls up to the building. There was well, a even, line. Even line like the- I'm there and I'm in line and I get my position in line and we get up to a certain point and then I'm looking. And we're like, we were still following the line when they let in, like up to the tent. And I'm looking, I'm like, there's a second tent, and I didn't realize that we were VIP. I don't know if I missed it in the email or something like that. So I went up and asked. I'm like, "Hey, do you have a so and so on your list?" And they they had they, they had me me and Alex. So I'm just like, "Hey, Alex, come on, let's go." <laughs> so, which is great. But also, first dibs on the merch tent. So that was that was nice too. So yes, yeah, so if if I get you tickets, no matter who it is, I'll always make sure you're VIP. Thanks. So really, really appreciate it. It was a hell of an experience. <laughs> Hell of an experience way, that I've been holding over. one he can now talk about. So yes, it's great. yes, that I've been holding over <laughs> Mike's head for over a year now. <laughs> and, and, the, and the best part about the VIP is all the Modelo and Bagel Bites you can handle. Oh, yes, my exactly. God, yes. Now, all the Bagel on. Bites. <laughs> Chris? Yeah. I don't know if you guys have all the Bagel Bites I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> That's That is a bold statement, sir. There you go. <laughs> right now, let's put it out here. Right now, we're going to have Mad Mike uh, versus uh, uh, who's in that versus commercial? Sonna versus Masqueria Sagrada Thank you. in a bagel bite challenge. You yes. will lose horribly. <laughs> and, and, and if it goes anything like the Matt Hardy MVP pizza eating contest, <laughs> that we you, you will get yelled at and you will be told this is the worst goddamn segment they've ever put on television. <laughs> Uh, that sounds real personal. Oh, it sounds like oh, something that might have happened in real okay. life. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, uh, so I do have one question. Just one? Um, oh, yeah, seriously. Just, well, no, just no, one? no, no. It's it's one that's been sticking in my brain. Uh, ever since the um, the stuff that's happened post tapings. Okay. How weird has it been to see the sexy star stuff unfold on TV? Yeah, because I, I gotta say, because I don't know if you're given the, given the current climate. I don't know if you're aware of this, but we did, we had a big question one week, Chris, where you know, given the current stuff and and you know, knowing that you know, hey, it's in editing, it's like you know, anything can be on the cutting room floor. We had a question where we're like, how do you kill sexy star off a of Lucha Underground? <laughs> well, that that's. That's who knows if she's going to be killed off Lucha Underground. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I think at this point, eaten by a giant spider. I mean, that's a, definitely a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I, to me, it's just like it happened. It was taped. I, I get tweets from people being like, oh, my God, how come, you know, how could they have just done this and put this on TV? Well, because it was taped like 16 months ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay? yeah. yeah. Like even if I had it my way and we didn't have the break in between, it still would have been taped like eight months ago. Yeah. So when it would air, actually that probably wouldn't even have happened. And then, oh my God, we need Aerostar to go and take us all back time and change everything. Oh, <laughs> oh all hey, your questions. there you go. Yeah, Matt. Well, I just wanted to, just so we can get past this topic, because I'm sure it's something Chris loves talking about. Um, just, I just want to ask it as directly as possible. Um, if and when we get our uh, much-anticipated season four, um, to your knowledge, um, would Sexy Star be invited, welcomed back uh, to the cast for season four? I mean, that's that's not a call for me to make. Of course um, not. I, yeah, I'm not. I really don't know. But, I mean, I will tell you this. Like, um we will follow up on every story. We will not let any story go away. And that's, that's, I, I, I'm just, I'm not into not following up and not handling it and just leaving something hung out to dry. Even though everybody's like, oh, this story's dead. They just forgot about it. They threw it away. No, we never do that. We don't. Right, right. I mean, it's a little bit of handling like like this actor is not going to come back for the next season of so-and-so show, right? Like it, it's kind of a different thinking for something like this. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what's going to happen, to be honest. I do not know. I do not know. I don't know really the specifics of anything. Uh, that's not a decision for me to make. That's for people who, who sign paychecks and things like that to handle. <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth. Which, please, I, I, sign, sign a paycheck for me. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, for, for what it's worth, I would not mind her being killed off by a giant spider in a comic. Oh, that's that's it. That's, I, that's, I, I mean, would, I, I would love to do those comics again. I, you know, somebody also uh, tweeted me before I came on here and was like, "I would love to see like Masquerita and Paul London and the Rabbit Tribe and like their journey and what they do to when they go to find the White Rabbit." I'm like, "Yes, yes, vignettes like that would be amazing. I would love to do that." You know? Yes, absolutely. Like, uh, just a whole trippy comic book of that. Yeah, maybe would they would go amazing, like maybe right? they go like cook meth in New Mexico or something like that, or you know. <laughs> <laughs> is that Breaking Bad? What Breaking Mala Square <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, man. But, okay, so, uh, Chris, what was your least favorite story of season three? Oh, God. Ooh. Shit. Um, The first half I kind of forgot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> those fumes, those fumes. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't really have, I can't really say that. I, I, I liked all of them. I, I like all the stories and some of the stories that you might think are on the back burner, maybe not, maybe aren't. Um, you know, I like a lot of things. Uh, anything that involves Pimpinella is definitely yeah. golden. Um, really glad to see them come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Pimpy's the best. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, to me, I, I, I don't really think about things like that. I'm thinking about what the next storylines are and, uh, yeah, where we're going from there. Okay. I, I was just saying, because I feel like the trio's titles kind of got a short shrift this well, season. Well, yeah, I mean, in a way they did. I, I, we, you had the Reptile Tribe win those trio's titles and kind of the breakup of Phoenix, Drago, and Aerostar, and then Drago and Aerostar's story, which is kind of still going on and still – in the forefront, like, you know, Aerostar, obviously I would think at some point needs to try to save his friend, uh, his best friend. Well, I mean, but he already knows how it's going to turn out. So, Well, not necessarily. <laughs> well, you don't know that if he knows or not. Or, or if he even can change what's going to happen. Or if he, you know. Uh, but but, but to me, um, yeah, like, they got put in the back burner, but we had the Quato Cup. And, like, to me, that, like, that was awesome. So, <laughs> like... You know, things like that did get put on the back burner. There wasn't a trios tournament or anything like that. But, you know, the trios titles were kind of – but now they're kind of back in the picture again where you have two people who literally hated each other for for who knows how long uh, are now teammates with a guy who's kind of stuck in the middle and somebody who kind of came into the temple with one of them. Yeah. And, and uh, I think it adds some new interest back into the trios titles, not to mention that Pindar now has his head cut off and Daga is Cobra Moon's king. So, uh, you know, she obviously has done something to him uh, and she lied about what happened to him. And, and uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens there. So maybe in a way without having the trios titles be front and center in a match every week, we made the titles even more interesting and the dynamic of the storyline. So hopefully that that's what happened. Chris, you just kind of sparked my mind thinking about um, all of Dario's many um, concept creations. And uh, I'm wondering <laughs> who, who has, who has the dial of doom that doesn't have to be like sitting off camera somewhere in your uh, room there. Is it? Is yeah, it... We have the, the dial of doom is in a storage facility somewhere with our rings, with the set, with, with it's, it's, I think I, I like to think of it like where like Indiana Jones put the, the Ark of the uh -huh. covenant. Like, <laughs> like, like I, I like to, I like to think that's what it is, but it's probably just some crappy storage facility. <laughs> that, 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 also, that, that brings up another thought because we, we, we there's an image and, and I, I think a little bit of footage that was going around uh, that there's a, a few people dancing and what looks like the temple i think on an like it was a dancing with the stars or something a few weeks back yeah or america's got talent yeah oh that's things. right yeah. <laughs> so they, I mean, they, they use the temple for everything like they shot a nissan super bowl commercial in the temple why we were in there like shooting vignettes one day oh so, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. like there, there's always something going on like um i'm trying to think of uh what the show was where they did uh um What's the one with Vince Vaughn? Uh, True Detective. They did a whole True Detective. Like they had to do this whole like 
gunfight scene out right outside the temple while we were in Jeez. the temple working on other stuff. So there's always stuff going on in that area. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah you might, you might, you might walk into, you know, someone camping out for four days for Lucha Underground or Vince Vaughn. <laughs> you know, you don't, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't know. Or, or might, you might be able to get like some fruit on the side of the street or something. I mean, that was interesting. <laughs> you know, going down I mean, there. You, you, you came go- to the neighborhood. You yeah. See, yeah. You I, like. I was going to say it, it's so, I mean, it, it, it seems that it's, it's one of those like warehouse, like, you know, just a bunch of studio warehouses, right? We have like one of them here in town. Um, so, so, so like but yours is the most decorated of them it seems like is that peculiar to like somebody walking in for a nissan commercial or something and seeing a giant lucha you know underground sign on the top of it or something like that like are you kind of one of the few that kind of uses the external and and kind of uses like it seems like the whole of the parts of the, the set and, and and your surroundings a bit yeah it's funny though because like I, i'll you'll watch a show on netflix or like i'll like watch like sons of anarchy or something like that and the next thing you know you see like the temple you know, yeah, and, yeah. And it's just, it's everywhere. If you really look, it's, I mean, I think it's in like horrible bosses too. It's like, <laughs> if you really look, if you really look, uh, you'll see it in everything. I even, I even know for sure that it's in a, a big upcoming movie. I know for oh, sure geez. that it's in a big upcoming movie. Trying to figure out if we can IMDB that or what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there <laughs> IMDB for studios? <laughs> for studios or for like the shoe locations? Yeah, yeah. Somebody's but, doing that. But you should have seen it before we even came in. So, like, we took the whole – a lot of the areas and, and we, we took the carpet out. We made it smell less less like cat piss. Like, you know, <laughs> there, there was actually a man living in one of the offices. So, like, we did – the first season, we did the whole season. And, like, for what some reason, we couldn't get in this one room. And, and like, you know, we did the whole season and everything's going – so towards the end of the season, everyone's like, we really need some extra space. We've got a lot of people, like – uh, maybe we could do an extra dressing room or, or, or a room for the talent department. And uh, we went to the owner of the thing and, and he was like, Oh, whatever, do whatever you want. We ended up breaking the lock. And there was this whole, this like a guy lived there. And there oh was like, a, there, there was like a can where he went to the bathroom. There was like, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. The, the temple is a truly amazing place. And if you're, and if you're not there, if you're there very long time, it will begin to smell like urine. But, um, but once it gets, Holly Meowie comes in, uh, uh, beautiful Brenda. She comes in and she puts cat traps and stuff. So she catches the cats and then she, uh, rescues them and names them after all the luchadors on the show <laughs> oh my god that's a whole other so show hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so you're telling me that she can run a spinoff called lucha meounderground <laughs> yes absolutely uh yeah go to her like facebook or, or yeah. whatever her kitty rescue and my dog is squeaking a monster um, but uh <laughs> Is it the monster Matanza? Is it a monster Matanza squeak toy? It's an alien. <laughs> All right. Spoiler alert. There will be aliens in Lucha Underground Season 4. Oh. Confirmed. See, I can see what you're doing, Chris. You're yeah. subconsciously putting all these things in. I can tell. Yeah. I know yeah. how you work now. Yeah, that, that and the elephant tribe. You know, they're next. They're next. The elephant tribe. Oh. Hey, you know what? They they're they're good they're good brothers though cuz they always have their trunks packed. Ah. ah. Nice. <laughs> Bring your gear kids. Uh. Yeah, but, so uh, the Holly yeah. Mary rescue, rescues all the cats and she names them after Luchador. So there's like Mil Muertes was adopted by one of the uh girls who's the cameraman. Uh there's like uh yeah, there's Tejano. He took a while Wait, to you get didn't give them all like crazy cat names like it's not Mil Mort <laughs> Where I think, I think oh, yeah. maybe some of them had had a little take on it, but like you know, uh, Prince Puma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a, there was a Prince Puma. There was a yeah. There's pretty much everybody. Yeah, yeah. Marty the cat. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, oh. she's, she's the, an amazing, the, amazing the Mara Pussy Cat. Yes, yes, Mara Mara <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> Katrina, that's awesome. Oh my, oh my God! I want, <laughs> we'll be here I all night. I want to see this version of Lucha Underground see, right now, now. Now I hope Holly's listening so she can name all these new kitties. You know, right? I mean, I think like we have like um, at halftime of the Super Bowl, Animal Planet runs like the Puppy Bowl. I mean, I think this is an obvious halftime Super Bowl eat. Sunday. Halftime. 
El Rey Cat Network, time heat. Lucha Meow <laughs> Meow to Ground, you know, or, uh, yeah. Cats no, no, no. Cats in halftime heat. Yeah. I love Brought that. to you by Lucha Underground. There you go. Even it, better. It, it, it's, yeah, it is pretty, it is pretty hilarious because there's so many times, like, if you could probably even see some of the outtakes, like, Dario will be in a serious scene in his office, and all of a sudden you'll just hear a cat go, <laughs> and you'll just hear cats mating. <laughs> and it's like, so, some poor PA is like, all right, quiet. We need quiet. And it's just, oh, yeah, God. yeah, it's, it's, uh, and, and you know what? If you're looking for celebrity endorsements, you could have Grumpy Cat be Dario Cueto. Sure. Dr. Claw. Oh, uh, yes. It's all coming yes, together. Yes, absolutely. He's a cat lover or yes, hater he sometimes, depending on how angry he gets. <laughs> I, I love all of these ideas. I love all of these. Oh, God. This, all right. Um, okay, so, Chris, what was your favorite vignette? that you guys shot oh my favorite vignette um of the whole season was phoenix and melissa santos training in the ring that was my favorite vignette um probably because i just i loved kind of the awesomeness of it and the cheesiness of it at the same time um yeah it was my favorite i, I love the music everything about it like um our editor ryan he, he cut that just did awesome 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 with that I thought the whole thing of Melissa actually getting to wrestle this season was done really well too. Cause, cause she's not trained, right? I mean, I don't think trained very long, but she did really yeah. great job and she worked yeah. hard. I mean, we worked for a long time to get ready for that and she really pushed it hard and did a great job. So I'm so proud of her. And uh, yeah, that would, I, 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 there was just something about their chemistry and everything that I really, really, really liked. I love the story. I thought oh, she was man. great too. I I was far exceeded my expectations for how a untrained ring announcer would would do in a real pro professional well, wrestling she, match. She pulled I mean, it she off a, fine. She was a great actress, even even ringside and like the 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 little little details she did. But you know, we started to pick up on that and see how she did things so well like throughout all the seasons. It was like God. I, I bet the fans would love for Melissa Santos to kind of be in a vignette or start to be in the storyline, and uh, they did. I mean, she, she was awesome, awesome. Now, when when uh, and this is just something I was wondering about. When the people come to the Temple for like Ultima Lucha, do they like? Do you guys give them a rundown of what matches they're going to see, or is it kind of a surprise? Because it seemed uh, like you were focusing in on a lot of people who didn't know what was coming when certain people were coming in. Well, some of the people who, who who get lucky enough to go there a few times, they know some of the storylines. Uh, so they know, like, maybe, like, Puma vs. Mundo is happening, or they know some other match is happening. But for the most part, everybody walks in, and they see all the banners hanging around the building, and they're like, oh, my God, this is what we're <laughs> seeing. So, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that, is, that is kind of how it goes. Oh, man. Uh, Gar Garza, do you have any questions about – because I know it's been a while since we've had you on. I'm sure you have – I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to say right now. Uh, most of the questions that we already talked about. So, uh, hmm. I don't know. What do you think about it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, so, all right. If you had, Chris, if you could, if you were only allowed to do one storyline that you kind of have in your brain, like, just to move on, like, be in, like, a comic or whatever, like, if, we don't get season four for a little while. If you, if there was something that you could pick up right away, and just put the story out there, maybe without the action, like what story would it be? Hmm. Um. Gosh. It's, uh, it's tough. It's real tough. Um, to me, probably the Prince Puma story. Okay. Okay, so so um, do we know what's happening with Puma? Like, is, I just think there'll be more to that story. May, maybe something that that bounces back, almost kind of like a ricochet. Maybe. <laughs> huh. I don't know. That, I mean, that's one of them. I think I also want to see uh, another one that I'm really invested in is Katrina uh, is in love with Phoenix, and he the, the, they're like. Um, they can never be together in a way, and, and she's she needs him, and 
he doesn't necessarily need her, but maybe he loves her too. I don't know. But I think that's something, an interesting dynamic that's been going on for multiple seasons that would be a great storyline to continue. Not to say, I also want to see Pentagon's reign as champion in the temple, because I think that's going to be uh, fucking crazy. Uh, do you think Pentagon is going to change the temple much like Mil Mortis did? Uh, maybe. I, I definitely think there's going to be changes to the temple, especially since they're, uh, you know, especially since after what happened at the end of the show. So, yeah, there, there does seem to be some new management. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the feds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh. Lucha Underground CSI confirmed yeah. for season four. But there are some crazy <laughs> characters and crazy ideas that we have that are just like that we've written down that we hope we get to do because some of them are so uh, insane. Like between me, Chris Roach, Matt Stolman, Andrew Kraski, like all the guys that we work with, and 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 the ideas that have kind of been thrown around, I'm thrown about. Like even stuff I've talked with Johnny Mundo about is just. It's not what you're expecting, and it's absolutely insanity. <laughs> is is there any chance that Boone the Bounty Hunter becomes a wrestler? No. Ah, oh, that's a shame. No, no. That's a shame because that's an awesome movie. <laughs> no, that, that's another thing I thought, man. I was like, that, I was hoping they were going to air Boone the Bounty Hunter after, but they had a new show, so they had to put that. Maybe Boone the Bounty Hunter will be on El Ray soon, I hope. Because that's cool. Oh, it, oh, it's it should be. It, it's it's great. Yeah, every, this is just like yeah, do the you do the Godzilla marathon and then you get Boone the Bounty Hunter. So yes. yeah, that'll be good. Maybe on maybe on like Christmas morning or something like that. Christmas morning all day marathon Boone the Bounty Hunter. Twenty four hours of Boone. Get booned all day. <laughs> are you are you listening, Robert Rodriguez? We got some ideas for you. Uh, I can't Matt, believe we just give this stuff away. Yeah, exactly. Matt, all right. Matt, um, well, our awesome chat room has been chiming in here and there, so I wanted to kind of bounce a few of these questions off of uh, Chris to see if he's got any of these. Uh, Brandon wants to know what you thought about uh, seeing Johnny Mundo and Taya on Impact. If you did, in fact, see Impact or have ever watched that not. program. <laughs> I did not watch Impact, sorry. but Or, or get um, that channel. No, I, I, I do get that channel because Big Brother After Dark is on Pomp TV. Um, but... <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, 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 I, I, I did not get to uh, watch them on actual impact, uh, but I did know that they were going to go there and I did know, uh, and I think it's cool. I'm curious, like, and I don't know how much of the, this end, you know, about with the, con the way the contracts work in Lucha <laughs> underground. And then, <laughs> I, I mean, we hear different things, different reports about what's allowed and who has to wait until the season ends and who can move there. But clearly Johnny and Ty did not have to wait until the season ended before they can bounce off somewhere else. Like, what's going on here? Like, is there any light you can shed on that, how, how that I was have, possible? I have no idea. Okay. But uh, they, I, I think it has to do something with, like, working and having some kind of deal with AAA where then you could do it because AAA is the one with the deal with impact. So that's what I mm. think it has to do with. So, um, I mean, that's the best I can tell you. I, I have no as idea. As long that's, as they're not using the same names, right? I guess. because no, Drago was there. Yeah. Well, uh, but, Drago, but Drago was Drago in AAA. Like, is, John, Johnny Mundo is a it's Johnny is Johnny Mundo in AAA. So uh, it, it's who oh. the hell, who the hell knows? Okay, that's, that's just weird. Knows. Then the more people can wrestle, the better to me. So mm. I, I, it doesn't really matter. And, 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 As, and, and plus, these guys haven't wrestled on like, other than you're probably these guys haven't worked for TV in America for like well over a year at this point, right? So it's yeah, kind of yes, I yes, mean, kind, kind, kind of like me. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it's a it's the same kind uh, of thing. Poor uh, Krista Joseph, hard times having to show up on Big Brother. Uh... <laughs> well, you got you got to work with uh, Cena though, right? On that on the American Grid. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. I got to do a little bit of that, but it's not to me like doing Lucha Underground is the best thing in the world. It's oh, like absolutely, the, absolutely. It's like, the, it's like the greatest job ever. It's just so much fun and and uh, getting to be creative with everybody and having, there's just such a great group of people that work on it. Everybody. I mean, everybody is awesome at it. I mean, even like the details of Dario's office, like the art department that does those tiny little details, like they, they are crazy geniuses. Those people. Like it's just, it's amazing. amazing. So, so Chris, um, 
since, since we're in a little bit of a hiatus, is there any way you could send me that ledger in Dario's office? I will send it back. I promise. I I, I still need to see what's in that ledger. Oh, the one that says does it say, the one that says "fucking brilliant" on the outside. Yes. Uh, they, uh, I, I have seen some of the things that are that are written in there, and uh, I, even Dario himself, like during shooting scenes, he writes things in there. So maybe <laughs> one day, maybe maybe one day, if there's like a Lucha Underground Hall of Fame that will be featured in it, <laughs> or 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 if the show goes away, we'll like put it on eBay. I, oh, I, God. No, I imagine this. I imagine this. Like I, I picked up the WWE Book of Rules, how it's all just like scribbles and stuff in there. Like I can oh, imagine like a release, you know. You know th- those contracts of the WWE, it just says like nothing, a bunch of crap, and then you put somebody's name in like big letters, and then you put like the pay per view. Like the writers make that contract and like print it out on the printer in the writers' room and then put it on a clipboard. It's just like hell in hell in a cell. You know? <laughs> Has anyone ever tried to put like a page of their screenplay as one of those pages on the contract? I, 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 I've written all sorts of horseshit on those things like that. Uh, I wish I wasn't in this fucking town right now or things like that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> You gotta take I'd that. Rather, you gotta do that zoom on the HD there. Yeah, I, I'd rather I'd, I'd rather be vacationing in Slam Town. <laughs> HD you? ruined that for everybody. Oh now, yeah, so. oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, I, I got. Jeez. We we were. I'm kind of trying to loop back around to the cable television thing. Uh, but uh, one of our uh, folks in the chat room, Richard, said that there was something up with um. That uh, something happened with his FiOS that El Rey got pulled off of FiOS uh, yeah, before I, the night of the finale. Did you hear anything about that? I heard about it that night. Like, right, so last night, um, Chris Roach and I we went to a bar uh, to watch Lucha Underground. Which, As you do. At the, at the same time, the Dodgers are playing the Cubs. So everybody in the bar was really pissed because one of the TVs had Lucha Underground <laughs> on it. <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, I was like, why is this shit on there? We're like, we're watching it. We're watching it. Like, you're not watching the Dodgers game? No, no, no. We're watching Lucha Underground. Um, no, baseball's a work. Lucha's yeah. real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, did you just see that guy get skewers put in his head? I'm going to order the shish kebab right now. Um, but um, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, all of a sudden I saw some tweets about that. So I have no idea what happened with that. It's, it's uh, that, was, that was awfully strange. So I mean, I think it's safe to say that the uh... – the cable rights fees game has gotten increasingly ugly over recent years. So it's just it's another crazy. power you know, play. It's yeah. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. It's like one day you're watching lifetime and the next time it's not on there anymore. You yeah. know? Well, I mean, at least it must be kind of somewhat of an honor <laughs> to kidding. be. I, I'm, to, ki- to, I'm kidding. I don't watch lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was going to say lifetime's never going. Away. I, I thought we were going to no, talk no. about the lifetime <laughs> movie network there for a second, but I guess we're not. All right. <laughs> yeah. No, no. The lifetime Pentagon movie. Oh, that, I would like to I, see I that. Watch, I would watch that movie. Like Pentagon's been cheating on once, his wife or something like that. And then he yeah. once had fear, but then <laughs> he had Seto. Yeah, it's a know. Christmas movie. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, right. man. I want to see a very Pentagon Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know it's funny. We, it's funny you say that because we do want to do a. We've always wanted to do a Lucha Christmas episode, even if it doesn't air on Christmas. We've Honestly, that's how you should open season four. <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> it's a very Pentagon Christmas. It's Christmas morning. Pentagon's like making coffee. He's, and he's he, his... he he opens up the door. He's like, "You there, boy? What day is this? <laughs> Why it's Christmas Day, sir?" <laughs> then he runs out and breaks the kid's arm. <laughs> Yeah, Masquerade tries to bring him a Christmas goose and ask for like a, a a coin or something like that, and he breaks him in half. <laughs> or or he cooks him or something. Yeah, yeah. Even if you just do it completely outside of canon, like like make it like make it like the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> well, you, well you not think, entirely. You think Pentagon is no changed. exactly entirely. Sorry. Yeah, you think Pentagon has changed his mind and has realized the true meaning of Christmas, and then he just breaks everybody at the at the at the caroling session or something like that. Yeah, I, I agree. Man, I can't wait to see Pentagon visit his home planet. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I think Aerostar would be the one visiting. Yeah, his I, home I know, right? Planet. 
Oh, geez. Um, so I do have I do have a question. Something I kind of expected to see in the um, in the little vignette session at the end, but we didn't get. Um, the stuff with Katrina's sister, uh, Katrina's daughter. Yeah. Um, what wh- what's going on with that? Well, she didn't get the gauntlet. Uh, so I think that's a problem. Not only a problem for her, but it's a problem for Dario. But I also think she was looking towards something else that could help her with the same problem that she has that she doesn't necessarily have to uh, maybe go to her mother about. So, uh, you know, I, I think that Katrina has options. <laughs> oh, man. That, but that, when that's that was gonna be, revealed, that's gonna that be, was I think there's going to be lots of fallout from... Not being able to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, um, um I, I, I love that you're already looking, at, working on the Foley sounds for uh, season four over there. Yep. No, no, no. That's that's all the rabbit tribe stuff. We're working real hard he, on that. He's actually, uh, he's actually going to interfere in Lucha Me Underground. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna be the big heel. He's gonna Running. break every cat in half. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I figured this was a good chance to jump in and talk about the gauntlet real quick. Um, like, so Cuerno has the gauntlet now. Do, does he know what he has, or is he just got it because it was there and this is cool, like shiny thing? I don't know. I mean, he put it on. That's the one thing that I think is uh, yeah always always interesting, and you always have to be careful about. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, who knows? Who knows? We'll see. Maybe he knows what it is, and he's trying to protect somebody, or maybe it's just something another trophy that he wants that he might he won't be able to keep his hands off of. I I don't know. You'll have to wait and watch. Hopefully, there's a season four. Well, yeah, I mean, he's had be... to have seen it spark with electricity. So yeah, it was in the little. It was in the. <laughs> he was just chilling in his chair. Maybe he was sleeping a little bit, but the the. Uh, the electricity went off in the little, like in that little glass tube that it was in. Yeah. In the Infinity Gauntlet container. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we're yes, all hoping yes. that, like, now that Quarano's back, like, we could renew our hope that the cowboy casual look is going to come back to the mainstream oh, now, right? Oh, I, I think everybody's going to be going cowboy casual. I, I mean, I, that is a good look. Like, you wouldn't mask think, and like. Hat? Yeah, cowboy casual plus mask plus cowboy hat. I mean, it works. It's amazing. It's a real old uh... Chevy truck. You're you're good to go. You know. <laughs> Actually, I, I I was going to be a cowboy this year for Halloween. Um, I may just throw on a lucha mask. You should. I I, I might just do that. Yeah, because because I, I was going to a Disney party and gonna be Woody, but maybe I'll just be a uh, cowboy Cuerno. Or be Tejano and like get some leather chaps and in a hat and you'll be Tejano. Right. No pants. You, you assume I don't already own leather chaps. <laughs> <laughs> get yourself a hot blonde and you'll be ready to go, man. Abs- absolutely. <laughs> and have her and make sure she rescues tons of cats and gives them all luchador names. Uh, I, I do want to say it was kind of a bold choice to not have Ray in a match on Ultima Lucha. Yes, it was. Uh, like, is there a reason for that? Was it availability, or was it just completely story driven? Yeah, kind of a bit of availability and a p- bit of story. So it was a little bit of both. So um, he had some some things that had to happen, and and at the same time, it was like we could have made it work, but it just made sense better for us to. I, I thought personally, like putting him in that hundredth episode in that kind of spotlight, and then following up on it in Ultima Lucha, and kind of leaving his whereabouts uh, kind of mysterious and then giving Azteca that spotlight kind of worked better for what we're trying to do. Okay. All right. Uh, Yeah. Cause I I will say that cage match when he, when Matanza threw El Dragon Azteca through that fence, that was like, Oh, okay. This is how we're starting. I got it. And that (laughs) happened a couple of times too, because they're like, they like, yeah, that, that, that reset the tone that you were expecting going into the match. And then even uh, with Puma and Pentagon, we just broke his arm basically right off the bat. Yeah, I, I, when we saw that, uh, we kind of rehearsed what we were going to do, and we knew how we were going to break that cage. I was like, I went to Dragon Azteca. I was like, dude, are you sure, man? Like, dude, this is going to be <laughs> – he's really strong, and I don't know how – like, he's like, oh, yeah, I totally want to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. He did it, man. I mean, like, so these guys are – they're they're next level, man. They're they're they are just absolutely awesome, insane, and down for anything. And it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. 
Yeah, the, the, the Pentagon breaking the arm thing was cool. Uh, you know, we had talked about at one point, like having it be at the end of the match. And then we kind of talked to Puma and Pentagon and, and Vamp and, and everybody and kind of decided it would be cool for it to happen early in the match. And then for him to kind of have to fight from underneath with it and, you know. Not try to make it predictable. I, 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 you know, I've heard like people be like, "Oh, but you know, Pentagon, you know, Puma had already just fought, and like you want to try to make Pentagon." But you know what? Like Pentagon is a baby face, the crowd. But if the moment he, in my opinion, he turns into a baby face and starts doing nice guy things, then I don't really like that Pentagon. I like the oh, ruthless, yeah. sadistic horrible pentagon and that's what makes me like him even more so i, I think i think, I think, I think, I think is, pentagon has to stay and act, act he needs to do heel things because that's what makes him so beloved is that he's so ruthless and and destructive yeah because like i don't think you'll ever get the temple to boo pentagon unless he actually goes in the crowd and starts breaking believers arms <laughs> yeah. and oh, even, sure. then, even then they might cheer then, yeah, yeah exactly. would cheer. Even then it's like yo i got my arm broken by pentagon how dope is this like even then they still might cheer yeah the believers might be like oh loot your family loot your family but the moment the dude next to them gets their arm broken they'll be like yeah you suck zero mino <laughs> <laughs> Hey Chris, uh, were no, you um, right. hey, Chris, were you uh, I don't know. How how did you feel when you heard the crowd uh give uh Puma the na 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 hey hey goodbye treatment there for a split second? I I, re I I really wasn't expecting it necessarily, but they changed their tune pretty quick, and I think they were just like, uh, no, we really like him a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, man. That was awesome. Uh, I think in a, I think in a way they thought that like when he won the match against mundo that it was like oh man puma he's here he's our guy he's staying this is it and uh then i think when that happened then they kind of became disappointed a bit so that's maybe why that kind of started but then i think they realized like dude this guy has busted his ass and and done a lot of awesome things and kind of helped put the show on the map so I, I I don't I don't think I think they were just kind of having fun and singing and, and it was mm -hmm. the end of the night and I don't I don't think it was met in any disrespect it was just having fun and following the storylines and by the way, Pentagon is fucking so over it, it's yeah. it's crazy in the temple like he's he's the man and he kind of took his place on the throne. There there was that shot where you had about like six people in one bunch with Pentagon shirts so that gives any indication right. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, they were they changed the Ole Ole chant to yeah. Zero Mato, and so at that point, we're just kind of all talking to each other, being like, we knew we've known for a while that he was the guy, but we wanted to kind of take our time and mm -hmm. really make make them want it. And some can argue, oh, we waited too long or whatever, but I, I, I think we did we did it right, and and uh, they they were salivating for it. And when it happened, uh, it was it was a huge moment. Like if you were there, I don't know how it translated on TV, but when he came out, like the place exploded. So uh, it was it's oh, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I like I mean, I know we kind of made predictions, and we kind of predicted that that would happen just based on like the the track work you guys have laid. Because like even Son of Havoc said like when I win that match, I'm challenging the winner of the title match. Like like the groundwork had already been set. So I'm like, well, I think whoever wins that match is probably going to challenge the winner just, you know, to kind yeah, of. I, I, yeah, definitely. I think that was kind of their trajectory where they met at that point where one of them had to. And I think Son of Havoc's kind of in a similar situation where the fans have adopted him as kind of their guy. And I think eventually when he has his moment, it's going to, you know, the temple roof might explode. So, you know, um, it, it was it was just a great moment. That you could What we couldn't show is probably like the – 10 minutes after the show where the Pentagon was still in the ring and people are still singing and chanting and, and we're playing his music and everybody's going crazy. So that, 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 that doesn't get to get seen, but we knew that, you know, that guy's, he's just so he's, he's amazing. He's over like crazy, mm -hmm. crazy. Uh, so, so will there ever be like any, I know, cause I know you guys are on Netflix. I'm sure is season three coming to Netflix. I don't know. I, I told I was told a while ago that it was, but I'm not really sure. So I hope. I think that'd be cool. But it, okay. And it's also been really helpful when when like you're bringing it up to people that are maybe even 
casual used to be or are not wrestling fans, you can always say, hey, go look it up on Netflix, right? Like, yeah, like, and I, ho- I, hopefully they fix some of the sub. I don't know if they haven't watched it in a while on Netflix. I don't hope they fix some of the subtitle issues because some of them were mm-hmm. wrong and some of the show was just in Spanish, so not everybody could understand it. So I hope they could fix those things if they did do it. But, but you know, I, just to get it out there is a good thing. So hopefully it does. I, I was told that it would, but you never know. I hope they can kind of get it at least out there at the same time as like maybe Glow season two comes out. That would make Ooh. sense, but but that would make sense. But a lot of times things that make sense don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Like like I, like I wish there was talk with Netflix where you could do a Glow Lucha Underground crossover show. Oh, well, yeah. you know what's funny is like uh, when we did the live events and uh, even a couple of the shows. Uh, like the girl, the the actresses from Glow, like they came to a lot of the shows and and came hung out and watched and and uh, kind of they couldn't believe their eyes when they were first starting. We did like a live event in San Diego, and they all came and like some of them, like Allison Brie, I think was like blown away. Like she's like, oh my god, like we, you mean that we're gonna eventually get to do some of this stuff? And I think Chavo was like, not so fast, not. So fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like when I, when I was watching Glow, I'm like. Oh my God! There's a lot of lucha on this. Like I, I was, I was excited. I'm like, here's Chavo, here's Johnny Mundo. Like th- th- I even, even even Marty Elias is uh, is there with hair. That's true. Yeah, one of the episodes. Yes, he he's the referee of the Mister Monopoly match. <laughs> and and Al, Al, was it Alex Riley? He's in that too, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Ryan, I thought Joey oh. Ryan. Yeah, too. Joey Ryan's in there. Yeah. But by the way, Alex Riley was really good in that. By the way, yeah. I, 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 that Glow show is yeah. good. I, I'm really impressed by that. That's, a, that's an awesome show. I'm looking forward to season two. I know uh, Marty and Chavo are back working on that, so that's that's good. Good. I'm pretty happy for them. Who knows who else is going to appear? I haven't really heard. Everybody's kind of been keeping it secret, but that's pretty cool. I, I would love to see Mari the Moth in the world of Glow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 or Taya. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Marty, Marty could be that crazy fan, yeah. you know. <laughs> That's Marty. inevitable. Like Taya I, versus Zoya the Destroyer is kind of the dream match at this point. <laughs> I don't, so. I'm, ho- I'm hoping Mundo comes back. Oh. Mundo, Mundo was awesome on the show. Like he was, I know, when he didn't come back the second episode, I was like, oh, shit. I was very <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, so, so how have you felt like seeing some of the guys that were in – Lucha, like since since everything's saved, how how have you feel seeing like some of the guys progress, like Mundo releasing Boone the Bounty Hunter, like uh, all the stuff Ricochet's doing in Japan, oh, all stuff like. I, I mean, I, I'm so happy for everybody that's that's got to go out and do things and and have had if Lucha's contributed to their success, then great. Uh, you know, if if it hasn't, then it is it, you know it is what it is. But I mean, as far as like Mundo, like I think when I first called him to do Lucha. He had just like he was still doing Boone kind of, and it was kind of a work in progress. So it was cool to see him finally complete that and then do that. And I, I know he's got a bunch of other stuff going on. I mean, uh, Trevor, uh, Puma, Ricochet, uh, like dude, that dude's a freak in nature. Uh, to me, it's been awesome to see guys kind of come in and then, uh, you know, take the ball and run with it. Like your kill shots, your Marty's. I mean. Uh, Dante Fox, A.R. Fox, like hit, the addition of him to the roster to me was just insane. And that guy to me is like, I mean, he's 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 uh, he's at the top of the list. That guy's so freaking awesome. It's amazing, amazing. Um, since we're on the topic of talented wrestlers, um, we did get a question from the chat room. The chat room is coming up with uh, uh, other for names for you to possibly perfu- pursue for uh, season four. So, uh, oh gosh, be careful who out. you say. All right, well, I'm, I'll, I'll just throw these two names out there, and then you can kind of like just kind of like try to no sell it. No, if you if if I say yes, then they'll probably get a phone call from a two hundred three area code, and then I'll be in, then I'll I'll miss out. So okay, well right, then just 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 no sell <laughs> it then. Well, Alex just threw out uh, Sammy Guevara. Uh, who's a guy who's uh, big in Texas? Yeah. He's been up here a time or two. And uh, Travis Banks. I'm not familiar with him, but maybe someone, uh, maybe Garza or uh, Mike does a little bit more about him. I mean, yeah, there's lots of guys out there that we have taken a look at, guys and girls, and uh, uh, we have our eye on a few. And we'll see what happens as we get closer to the season. There are some roles that obviously need to be filled. So, uh, mm-hmm. um, well, how about this for a follow-up then, um, so that I don't paint, try to paint you into a corner or try to get you into trouble? 
um, when you're trying to fill some of these roles, I mean, obviously there's no shortage of talented people in the ring. So what are we looking for? What are you looking for uh, when you're trying to find uh, the right person to fill these roles? You know, what kind of intangibles are you trying to pick out when you're? I mean, uh, I think casting. first it's obviously it's obviously somebody that wants to be here or wants to be and do this and be a part of it. Um, I think next is, uh, you know, the it factor um, for me. Like, you can't teach that. And uh, if somebody has the ability to be a great character, they have it. And, you know, I'm, let's take, for example, um, Cobra Moon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she was very new to wrestling uh, when we first kind of reached out to her. And now she's kind of perfected her craft, but she always had, to me, she always had the it factor and always had the ability to come across the screen to be a star. And uh, I think that's like, that's something that, that we definitely kind of keep our eye out for. And I think that's somebody that has huge promise. And that's another thing we're looking at. It's like who has promise and potential to become the next Prince Puma to become the next Pentagon to become the next star. So, uh, you know, we're always trying to build stars, create stars and, and create compelling characters. So, I mean, that's really what we're looking for. We're not looking for somebody who's going to go out there and just be boring. Like, uh, you know, like, the most boring person in the world. So oh, that's you're definitely, you're, yeah, you're out. I thought we are going to get happens. a name, Sorg. I thought he was going <laughs> to slip up. Matt Carlins, it's not you. Oh. Uh, um, I, got, I got a question because, I mean, everybody's asking, and, and you've alluded to it. Um, I mean, obviously, you, you have no official information or anything on a season four. But I think I, I think when wrestling fans, like, hear about this and, and, and everything, you know, I, I, wrestling fans maybe are not used to the idea of seasons, right? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to it comes to you know what we usually watch, there, there's no off season. They say in every Fed, of course, and you're very familiar with that. Um, yep. How typical is it to be for a show in the position? You know, obviously between season one and two, there was a big question mark uh, for a while, right? We were having basically, I think, the same conversation after season one uh, on yeah. whether there would be more. Um, how typical is it to be in this kind of holding pattern question mark thing, especially on something that? obviously has a bit of fire as a property uh, publicly and in the industry. Uh, I, I, I think it, it's somewhat typical. I, I also think at the same time, you know, when you're the hottest show on the network, like, you know, you want, you, you're hoping that, that, that it's, you know, they're behind it full, full, full fledged. But I think that they are, I mean, p- people forget, like we were off from season one and everybody's like, Oh, it's never coming back. Luch is done. And not only did we shoot season two, but we shot season three. We shot 67 episodes or 68, 66 episodes or something like that within like six months. So mm-hmm. uh, it, 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 to me, like Lucha comes in, in, in these crazy quantities. Like, I, I don't know. They might say, hey, we want you to do some episodes for season four. And then we want to take a couple of months and then we want to go right into season five. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. And, and. But, but I think people are like immediately when, when, when nothing's happening, everybody is hitting the panic button a little bit. But I mean, mm. trust me, I've hit the panic button a lot. <laughs> on the, on this <laughs> I've, been, I've been pretty nervous and, and wanting it to happen, but yeah. I, I, I have faith that it will. I mean, it, it's, it's such a, uh, a, a popular show, and I think it's, it's, it's a great show for the L. Ray Network. And uh, I think a lot of people like it. There's a, there's a pretty hardcore following. I don't think necessarily they can test the – I think Eric once said something like this. It's like they can test the ratings and you can see that, but when you're trending on Twitter like pretty high up, like that's – you can't really – you can't really put a price on that. Like that's right. that's pretty that's pretty awesome. Yeah, right. you guys are definitely trending as, and during stuff like the uh, baseball playoffs going on, everything like that, like to be trending during – those kinds of like high traffic numbers, that's impressive. Yeah. I mean, to me, I think like in this world we live in now and, and kind of this, uh, you know, th- there's lots of, not everybody's watching it on cable. <laughs> there's, there, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> there are people watching it the, uh, the Dario Cueto way. And, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there's also people watching it the Sorg way. He <laughs> bought the whole season on iTunes. See, thank you, Sorg. Thank you, Sorg. I agree. I, I, I bought the season on iTunes, too, but I also have 
the already that works. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's job security right there. Yeah, and it has been interesting and, 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 and painstaking as I as I noticed tweets from Mike and everybody else on Wednesday night and having like, oh, that's my Thursday morning tradition. I got to wait till I get to it. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm really happy I finally got a chance to slog through that and, and, and you know, get caught up in, uh, for this conversation. I tell you what's going to be really nice now, Sorg, hmm. now that we've got kind of like this rest period, I can Google Lucha Underground again and not have to worry about being <laughs> That's spoiled a fair again. Point. I can go yeah. on to like, uh, like uh, my, my little like wrestling records thing. Like I finally like kind of refresh myself on what happened and I don't have to worry about getting spoiled. Yeah. You can, yeah. you can update the Wikipedia page. It's, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's going to be. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's a, because I, I always have to be so careful. Like, if I'm looking up someone's Twitter account, I have to be very specific. Like, PJ Black Twitter account, no spoilers. <laughs> I'm not like, wow. I, I, I gotta say, I'm very impressed with how many people out there uh, have, have made it this long. I mean, it's been a long damn time. I mean, I think we yeah. stopped this, like, I don't know, like 16, 14 months, something, something crazy like that. The people who've made it without spoilers, they should get, like, some kind of trophy or something like that. Like I did I mean, not spoil myself. That I look forward insane. to my trophy. Yeah, I I was not spoiled. I got I, I see. I learned my lesson because the first season I thought I spoiled myself on the trio tiles, but I didn't know about um the uh, the crew challenging afterward. Uh, so wait. I I had read that that um that the unlikely trio won the titles, and, I, and I'm like, oh man, I spoiled it for myself. And then when the crew came out, I'm like, hey, I didn't spoil it for myself. Yay. Yeah, I'm the kind of person that, like, you know, Star Wars will come out and I will find out the spoiler before I go accidentally and want to kill myself. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, I applaud those who have uh, who have made it without that. It's pretty amazing. Uh, Ed Burke in the chat room says, Lucha Underground is the only reason I have iTunes installed. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know, because it's funny, too, because when you go even go on the Facebook page, like, sometimes there's some asshole who, like, will put, like, guess what? Uh, Pentagon wins the title at the end of Ultimate Lucha Trace and uh, beats Prince Puma. And just to be able to avoid that is uh, is is uh, to be applauded. Yeah, it's it's especially when you have people going on like other podcasts. I'm not going to name any names. Hmm. Man in a cowboy hat and spoil things about Lucha Underground before it happens. Like oh. uh, Jr. Oh, really? JR yeah, JR talked about Sexy Star winning the title uh, before she did. By God, I'm going to have to throw some barbecue <laughs> sauce God. in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, wasn't there, there – there was something around Sexy Star where, like, there was – well, so, everybody kind of everybody kind of knew about it. At the, I mean, it, it, it's yeah. JR's job to do, to do that. But yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Okay. I, it, it, so it's, I, it, to me, it was it, it it is it did kind of reach a point where it was starting to get disrespectful toward the 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 kind of viewing experience the the fans of Lucha Underground were looking for that we were looking yeah. for that that we were not looking for that you know I'm watching NXT and I don't care if I know what happens what got taped yeah. at Full Sail last week and what's coming up next week that it was more of that you know, that Walking Dead, you know, Breaking Bad kind of viewing experience. And I don't think even to this day that a lot of people who report on wrestling and, and cover wrestling, that they still don't really get it. They don't get that, that basically, yeah, like that viewing experience that the Lucha fans were kind of looking for uh, from the show. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't really think they care either. So, but, you know, it is what it is. But I, I'm glad that you guys made it spoiler free, whoever did. That's Oof. pretty cool. Yeah, uh, like, and, and but the thing about Lucha, like, even if you read all of the in-ring results, there's no way you'd know exactly what happened at the end of 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 Ultima, Ultima Lucha, because it's not like you know someone comes out into the temple and says, "Hey guys, by the way, just so you know, after Pentagon wins, uh, we shoot Dario in the gut." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, that is the one. That is the one good thing for the fans that are there is they don't know any of the backstage stuff, so they're reacting naturally to anything that's happening, which is cool. And the other thing is we shot a lot of stuff way out of order, especially in season three, and really kind of 
threw people off a little bit. It was bit, amazing so. how many times you saw Melissa Santos' costume change after, like, every match. So, sometimes five times in one episode, and it takes oh, yeah. a while. So she has to go get changed. She has to get her hair done and all that. So then we have these dark matches and everything that Vamp and Stryker have to change. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a pain in the ass. And then you're trying to keep track of – you know, five or six different shows that you're doing at the same time and trying to make sure that it fits and the time works and everything else. So it's, uh, it was season three was crazy. It was crazy, but, uh, I'm happy. I'm pretty impressed with the way it turned out after doing it so fast and doing so many episodes that in my opinion, it really, uh, Ultima Lucha kind of made it, uh, you know, as, as you guys were saying, some of you, it's the best Ultima Lucha of all time. Was so there right. a um? Was there an episode that stands out for you as being one where, um, it got particularly desperate as far as trying to make every content wise make everything you shot fit into a single episode? Oh God! I mean the finale, but like the first like three to ten episodes. Actually, the first nineteen episodes getting <laughs> tight. <laughs> Taya wasn't there for like the first taping of the first like 18 or 19 episodes. So we had to put her back into the show for all those things. Cause she was such an important part of the world right underground. So she taped most of her stuff all late in the season. So we had to do that and then build her program with sexy at the same time. So it was like some of the stuff we were doing like with her and sexy hadn't really happened because we hadn't taped the stuff for like episode one or two with them. So we had to go back and do it towards the end. Wow. <laughs> and, and you kind of see that. Cause I, I, I know it's from like, you know, like Alex and I were like, are we like, Hey, I think we're in this episode. And then we'll like notice ourselves in a match <laughs> and then not. And we can't, we could definitely see it with like his bright ass green uh, yeah. shirt that you can and get over occupy pro wrestling.com <laughs> and proceeds go to uh, uh, save the tatas this month, by the way. So please go do that. Russell fans. Uh, but it, anyway, it's, yeah, it's funny because like you'll think you're at the episode and then you'll look and David Arquette is in your seat. And you're like, yeah. what happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> why am I? Why you, am I? You, 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 did, you, you did see you and David Arquette sat in the same seat, so we could probably Sorry. probably nobody even noticed. Oh, geez. Sorry, you sat in the same seat as a former WCW champion, which is amazing because he con- con- completely contributed a promo to. Uh, to a wrestling show that I work on here locally a couple months ago. So it all loops around, right? So, um, wow. We're all connected. I, I, I thought I felt sad. Oh, <laughs> but in There's a good way. Sad about David I, I, yeah, I like David. Arquette. I couldn't think of another. Right, uh, I can't. It's the only word that comes to my mind when it relates to David Arquette and wrestling, unfortunately. All right. Uh, so Chris, I, I have a question for you. This is this is strictly you know speculative, okay? Speculative, um, because that's what I like to do. I mean, you you know that. We we heard Dario calling out for his father. Yes, he said Papa. A, 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 as he as he was as he was maybe dying. By the way, really mad that that wasn't subtitled. <laughs> is that all he said? <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, I saw like Brandon Shroud had a had his like um, uh, over under thing that he puts out, and he 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 was like pointing out that in the closed caption it said it said Puma Puma. So yeah. he thought that he thought that Dario was calling Puma. Oh and shit! Then, and then somebody responded Hefe Hefe, but they didn't respond Hefe. Uh, it was like Hiho or Miho or one of the two. Yeah, I heard I heard Hiho. That's that's how, that's how he knew he was calling for his. His yeah. dad. Um, if you could fantasy book <laughs> someone to be Dario's father, yep. who would it be? Uh, well, gosh, uh, there's some people out there. <laughs> I've heard one guy in particular pitch that it's unmasked Dr. Wagner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was about to say that. Dang, shit. Was oh, my God. That. He's perfect. <laughs> Wait, was that you, Garza? No, no, no. I was about to say it, but it wasn't me. <laughs> I, 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 the only thing I'd be afraid about that is that everybody's television might explode with cool if they're both on. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my god. Uh, but um, I, yeah, we have ideas about uh, how that character, if that character even shows up, how that character will be. I mean, we'll see what happens. Wait, I got a question about Papa Papa Cueto. Uh, okay, because okay. my Chris, my personal pick. He turned we, his he turned his sacrificed his son to turn him into a god. No, I want to know. Have we seen oh. Papa Cueto 
on Lucha Underground? The back of his head, the back of his body, anything? Maybe. Has he been present at any point? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I, I haven't thought about that yet. So, so let me go back with the old stuff. And go. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I mean, because this is just me. I love it to be Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> That's cool. Like, that, that's like cool. I, I mean, we got Lorenzo Lavas on there, so you I guys, mean, you guys need to just like pitch this to me on the side in a text message, then say this out loud because then we can maybe make it happen. You know, come on. All right. Maybe we should just say it right now, Chris. Chris, what's well, it gonna hold take? On, hold on. Let me get my phone. I'll throw out my other five picks. No, no, look, let's, look, see, look. let's see if see if the original most interesting man in the world is available. I mean, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> And now he only drinks Modelo. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I'm I'm down with that too. Oh man. Harrison Harrison Ford. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. Too. Yeah. Why not? God. Why not? Harrison Ford? <laughs> like all those stories you heard about Dario Cueto, they're all true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ed Burke was also saying that the closed caption definitely said Puma. So I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I used my ears and not not my eyes to try and. Yeah, well, whoever did that did a bad job. Although I mean, maybe he, maybe the dad. Oh my God, his father's a time displaced Prince Puma. Huh? What? <laughs> Whoa! How how very X Men of you. I wouldn't. <laughs> leave, I wouldn't leave anything out. So. Days of Quato's yeah. past. Oh, <laughs> it was crazy. Like it, it was. It's such a whisper at the very end. Like I'm. I'm sure I wasn't the only one. Like replaying it and with like my ear to the TV with like the sound turned all the way up. Uh, okay. What the hell is he saying? Question you know? for the panel: How many times did you rewatch the last segment? Like five or six <laughs> times. Uh, about yeah, thirty. Yeah. About thirty times. <laughs> well, I have. I have to say, one of my favorite visuals of all time is just the head of Pindar. <laughs> just the head of Pindar. Like, I mean, like, because it's so obvious that it's like it has like bug eyes. I'm like like how B movie and like horrible is that? It's amazing. It's like it's like perfect grindhouse crap. Like it was like, yeah, it's exactly yeah. what we wanted it to be. Um you know and uh yeah he Pindar no longer lives. That's right. Uh, my favorite line from Lucha Underground ever is Drago saying, Pindar, he lives. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. He goes, Pindar, he lives? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's always my favorite. I, and By I, the way, I, I'd like to think that... Um, Pindar has a bit of whiplash from Masters of the Universe. In I, I think, I think Ooh, SmackDown yeah. stole, or like, or I think oh, stole oh, your yeah. guys' gimmick. Oh, they what? Pindar? No, no. Uh, with Carmella having James Ellsworth on a leash. Oh, oh! Does she have him on a chain like that? Maybe? She, yeah, yeah. She ha- she has him on a leash, basically. Don't worry, you did it first. That they live in. Uh, I mean, it depends on what you think of New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go down. I, hey, I, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I've been to Jersey. Would I call it a snake lair? Not necessarily. <laughs> I wouldn't not call it a snake lair. <laughs> There's a, yeah, you definitely don't want to be a rat in New Jersey. There we go. If Boom. you're a rat in New Jersey and then you sleep with the fishes. Yeah, right? You'll end up in uh, the Meadowlands or something. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> I, I just – I know we kind of alluded to this a little bit, but since we're talking about that final montage, just like the agony of Dario dialing that phone. Oh, absolutely so killed me at the end. I, like reach him, and then he just hears – I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, he's dialing 911. And then he goes to like the fourth number. I'm like, oh God, no. Who's he calling? Well, he uses that phone for like special phone calls, but also he threw his cell phone out in like episode like uh, 27 or something. <laughs> Benjamin, Benjamin Cook tried to call him and he threw it into the, into the uh, trash basket. You know, that's, you know, I work with with promoters that, that, that have a flip phone still, and this, like, just takes a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, sorry? Why does it not surprise me that wrestling promoter somewhere has flip phones? Oh, yes. Uh, about 45 minutes south of uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, it's still happening. Oh, it's your kind of scene, Chris. I, I, I but... don't think the fanny packs for it. <laughs> My God. If you 
ever make it to Pittsburgh, I have a show for you to see. Oh, you got to see this one. <laughs> <laughs> it'll give you – I think if you think the temple is something, you got to check out West Newton Gymnasium because, man I, – I, I made my fair share of indie wrestling shows in Connecticut area before, so I'm sure it will kind of be close to that. It'll bring back good ah, memories. Man, I cannot imagine. What's Connecticut wrestling fans like? I mean, it feels like it's – it's. I mean, that's, that's still too suburban, right? Hey, hey, the mean streets of Greenwich, sort of. <laughs> yeah, I believe mean it. Mean streets. Once you get kind of north a little bit, like towards yeah. Massachusetts a little bit, it gets a little bit more like rednecky and like, uh, you know, kind of kind of awesome. And, yeah. You know, you'll get, you'll get like a hot dog that's been sitting there forever. You know, that's oh, one thing you can get. Oh, man. And then maybe get a tape that you can trade with somebody. Or I'm gonna have, somebody remind me to send you a link after this, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you can still get a Polaroid probably in Connecticut with your favorite wrestler. That oh, good man. I think there's I think there's some. some <laughs> I Ten think, bucks for the Polaroid. I think there's a guy uh, uh, underneath a, a sheet trying to take a picture out here. So, uh. <laughs> wow! wow. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> hey, man! Even I'm not even I'm not brave enough to go down to West Virginia to see a show. So, I'm oh, like, oh geez, yeah, yeah. We we do not cross the Mason Dixon. It's just, <laughs> just, just no man's land. Stay out of Philadelphia. I agree. You know? <laughs> hey, you know what? If it's, if it's not good enough for the Stanley Cup, it's not good enough for us. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, God. All right. All right. Uh, so, Chris, I have a question. Yes. This is a question very near and dear to my heart. Yes. Is Vinny Massaro ever going to get a push? <laughs> oh, Chris, Chris, Roach tweeted, because, Chris Roach tweeted last night that Vinny is going to get some big push. And I said, I sent like a, a, a thing about like uh, of Dumb and Dumber being like, do you realize what you have done? <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I would love, I, dude, Vinny, get, he's pretty over, man. When Ooh. I saw him in the Battle Royal, I was like, Vinny's my dark horse to win this because the ultimate <laughs> opportunity is never really a good thing. So, like, I almost don't want someone that is, like, higher on the card to win one of those things. But at the same time, like. I, I do feel like later in the season, like, when, when I, if I could go back in time, another change I would have made to, like, the entire Ultima Lucha is when uh, Ivelisse kicks Jeremiah through the bathroom. Oh, yeah. that Vinny Massaro was sitting on the shitter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, now I, I'm, I'm telling you, if I ever make it to the temple, I still want to be just the random guy in the bathroom eating a pretzel. I, I'll, I'll put like, you in. If you ever make it to the temple, I'll find a yeah, way to put you in. Like, you I, I, I just want to be eating a pretzel in the bathroom because I feel like th- it, there needs to be at least one bathroom scene where no one is – is physically hard. Yeah, no, 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 no. This or is threatened. like this is like you know how they always have those contests about like a have a walk on part in the new Spider Man film, right? Where you're just like walking down steps behind some scene, right? Like this is like the fan interaction contest for Lucha Underground. Like you too could be eating a food item in the bathroom. Yeah, that's right. Just send in seven bagel bite UPC codes yeah. to the address on your screen. Yeah. You too. <laughs> the best thing about the bathroom is that it's really horrible. But we made it look even worse than it was, and it was really, really bad when we first moved in. Oh, there's an a, there's an actual shower in there. Oh. And some of the, some, I, I, we put it in, but we like stained it and made it. Not, but still, some people still go in there and shower. I would. Oh my god, I'd never, never. There's a hotel that we all <laughs> stay at. That's right up the street. Like you can go use that. Like don't go. No. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, hey! The pro indie wrestlers have seen much, much worse. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably uh, a good point. Yeah, you go, you go to a building that's rented by a guy with a flip phone. You're in big trouble. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, dude, I need to show you shots of the ba- of the of the basement of this place because it is straight fucking out of a lucha underground scene. It is it is scary as hell. <laughs> the VFW on the Pennsylvania Ohio border is pretty dangerous. No doubt, very dangerous. <laughs> Jeez, but that's his charm. Oh, Anyways. <laughs> oh, I do want to come to a show now in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Shit. I, I, want, you, I want to be there when you go to it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Uh, well, Bruce Pritchard was there one time. 
So, oh, cool, man. <laughs> I love Bruce. They were, they were doing that. They were, am I allowed to talk about Ah, fuck. It was five years ago. Uh, they were doing some kind of bar rescue <laughs> reality show kind of thing with indie, indie, with indie wrestling that never took that off. Never panned and, out? Yeah, yeah, that's, no. yeah. That surprised me. As um, they do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, something in wrestling doesn't always work out exactly how it's supposed to? I thought, every, I thought all the wrestling fight. pitches got greenlit, Chris. Come on. And speaking of bar wrestling, I'm going to watch Luchasaurus team with uh, Mr. Pectacular at bar wrestling. Oh, in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh my God. I haven't yeah. seen some of that bar wrestling. That looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard they had a thing where Rick Knox did a, just found a giant bag of cocaine under the ring. And he did it, and then he went crazy. <laughs> oh, by the way, Rick Knox doing a fucking flipping plancha? Yeah. Okay. Where did that come from? <laughs> We just started talking about it, and Rick was like, "Hey, uh, you know, they're like slapping me around. Like, maybe I should get up and like, do you know, do do a plancha or over the top." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> yes, Rick, <laughs> we will do that." <laughs> I was like, "Everybody was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's do it." And we just, yeah, it's was, it was just one of those days where, where everything you want to do, you did. It was so oh, much fun. God. That's the fun of Lucha Underground right there. So, you know, kind of everybody is involved. And, and it's that vibe. And it's a little bit of that vibe of indie shows, too. Because they're yeah. like, you, I, how many times I watched like a lot of the guys I know just like walk in. Like there was like a new scat, like kind of like scaffold stair thing in, in, in the uh, gymnasium. Of course, the one guy who always does looks at us like, no, I'm going to jump off that. It's like, yeah. OK, that's <laughs> pretty high up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah that's my jam. <laughs> You see, it sound like Aerostar. Like Aerostar, he keeps looking at things higher and higher, and I'm just like, no, no, no. Is he looking at? Because I remember there's a on the other side. You know, it's, it's well. I've mentioned before. It's wide open, kind of like like where everybody's facing in the temple, right? And there's a guy up in a lift that has a light, and yeah, when they're doing yeah. like the crowd things and the lights are moving around, like there's a guy just like moving the light around, and you see like the lift like shaking and everything and i'm like <laughs> that is really troubling to me because i've because yeah. i've done lift safety videos <laughs> so i'm just like i don't know if he's tied off right so but yeah yeah that, that, like, that was like one of the distracting things when i was there just watching that guy uh, how, about, how about when the, how about when like the people come and they they vacuum the glass and like the, <laughs> They, 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 they bring out like a shop vac and then they bring out like these like little scrubbies and start scrubbing the blood out. I did like, see it. I did. Did you yeah. stop scrubbing at some point during the, the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, Lucha, yeah, by the way? Yeah. There's definitely <laughs> points where it looks like you give up on cleaning the mat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at some point, you just start saying, well, it's getting late here. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the mat is always stayed. I, I don't know how clean you're going to get it. Oh, jeez. Oh. Um, so I, I have a question. I know you've been. Like, because I thought that the kill shot Dante Fox stuff was going to lead to some kind of scaffold match, because mm. that seemed like, like you know, they're both snipers, like you know, they perch high and they're staring at each other. Da- from, Dante right? Dante called kill shot out from that yeah. scaffold, yeah, yeah, so. and like uh, they're on top of the roof looking at each other. Like I thought that's where we were going. Is there any kind of match that we've seen similar in wrestling before? But we haven't seen like the lucha version of it. Yes, that you'd be dying to. Di- or yes, all right. What kind? I'm not telling. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's one that I want to do next season that is like my favorite favorite match that I've oh that I pitched for seven years at WWE. I pitched seven years to do it, and I got told no every time. And I'm going to do it, Lucha Underground. Oh, oh so we've never seen cool. it in WWE. Maybe, maybe not. It's or you yeah. hadn't seen it in a while. But yeah, it's it's a match that yeah. Mm, okay. I can't I can't I don't want to give it away because it's too cool. Urgh, damn. To me, it's cool. To you guys, if I like, God damn, Lucha jumped the shark. <laughs> is, is it a coal miners glove match? <laughs> no. Panties. <laughs> but but if we did have a coal miners glove match, <laughs> Braun panties match. There yeah. A, a Braun panties match. Pimpinella and the Braun panties match. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually. That's not a bad idea. But, yeah. <laughs> That's Take, not a terrible idea. Let's start p- putting out the dough for that one. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> wow. Uh. Oh, man. Um, okay, so, uh, Chris, who, like, I, if you could pick one person from, hopefully when there's a season four, that you think will be a standout, like like Dante and Marty were this year, that didn't, like... That were like on the cusp 
mm-hmm. but like that you think could jump to the next level in a potential season four, like a Ricky Mundo or something like that. Like, who do you think it would be? Gosh, um, I think I think Vibra could be one. Uh, I've seen a lot of his stuff kind of improve. I think Cobra Moon could be another. Um, and then uh, let me just throw out one more, just for the hell of it. Um, some of these people have already kind of stood out a little bit, but um, uh, gosh, I don't know. I think that's probably it. I, I, the, the, there's there's a ton of people that I think could could stand out. They just have to 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 go ahead and and do it, and, and the storyline has to be good and has to be right for them. But I mean, I, I think anybody could break out. It might even be somebody new. Who knows? Okay. Um, is there anyone that you've seen since the um, like since the tapings of rap that you'd really love to get? WWE? Like, some, like somebody? Wait, wait, wait! Somebody in WWE that I would love to get? Well, no, like maybe, like maybe just someone that who's like kind of risen up through the indies or left mm-hmm. WWE, like someone like a I Jack, mean, Sw- like a Jack Swagger. Or I something. mean, sure, like Jack Swagger. He's a friend of mine. I would love to have Jack Swagger. I'd love to have Wade Barrett. I'd love to have Neville. I'd love. To, did Neville leave? I don't even know if he did. I heard that he might. We'll see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd be cool. I mean, uh, yeah, Honky Tonk Man. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I do want to have more some more cameos, uh, so I think that would be fun too. I think that's a fun part about the show is, is to have 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 random wrestlers and like uh, legends and like strange uh, strange characters. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, there, gosh, there's a few a few guys from WWE, obviously, but there's uh, I got my eye on a few people that are in Mexico right now that are just blow my freaking mind with how good they are that's good because i mean that's one of the big things i like is about like we got introduced to all this like mexican talent and you know, foreign talent that we do not get exposed to here like i think that was the in- one of the initial feels you know that I mean, the, yeah you know, guys like I mean, pentagon are like basically household names now uh, among wrestling fans at least like there, there are so many young guys down there, and there are even some older guys. Like, I mean, I gotta just throw out a name, but like somebody who entertains me, like Averno. Like, I love him. Like, he's just he's yeah. talented, and I think you could use him in some kind of way. Just he's got so much personality. Uh, you know, um, you know, Ray a Scorpion, or like you know, uh, guy. I mean, there's just so many different guys that are down there. They're they're just so talented and so awesome. Um, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, Matt, do you have any more questions? I think I think I've exhausted all of my things I need to get out of my brain before I watch Lucha again and come up with eighteen more. But yeah, well, while, while we wait for the season four trailer and the uh, <laughs> and all the numerous questions that we'll bring about, I'm just yeah, I, I I've exhausted pretty much everything that I've got. Um, I'm just. The, the, the last thing that I was curious to ask is, like, Chris, what have you been doing with yourself for the last year? <laughs> uh, other than begging, re- praying for season four. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I've been uh, – I, look, I did a little thing on American Grit, um, that John Cena show, and I worked the summer on Big Brother. And, um, yeah, that's it. I've just been hoping and praying for the last year that Lucha Underground – and I've been hoping to come back on this show because I think uh, – well, I might have done, like, a one in between – but uh, I think like I came on right before season three started, which was like, you know, maybe like four during years the ago. break, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, it's uh, yeah, I've been doing that. I've been uh, traveling a little bit. I've just been trying to. Now I'm like begging that, uh, hoping that Lucha Underground season four starts soon so we can get back to work. And just because now, especially after what what aired and like the kind of hype around it, like to mm. me, like I, I'm ready to go. Like my mind is racing with insanity right now. Well, probably the <laughs> probably the final question here: What can we as fans do more so even to help uh, the the powers that be uh, 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 know that there should be a season four? I mean, I guess just be as annoying as possible to the powers that be. Oh, we got this. How much you, want to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, bug them, tell them that you want this and, and, and ask them why, why you don't have it. I mean, to me, like the more socially active and the more uh, active the fans can be demanding it, I mean, it can't hurt. <laughs> to me, in All my right. opinion, I, I mean, if anything, I think that that kind of uh, – that kind of lets them know how pop- just how popular and how passionate the fan base is. I mean, I, th- I think that's one thing that everybody 
that I, I will say that's one thing I think that MGM and, and El Rey, everybody knows that this is a passionate and loyal and crazy rabid uh, group of fans. So I, 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 I don't have any doubts that it'll come back. I just, it's just a matter of when and, and, uh, I'm sure we'll keep having this conversation for years to come. I think, you know, oh my Absolutely. season, season four is over. There's never going to be a season five and then season five will happen and mm-hmm. there'll never be a season six. But uh, <laughs> I just hope that they, if it ever does end, that they give me a heads up so I can uh, finish it the way I, you know, the way that we kind of hope we can do it. And, mm-hmm. um, and that, that's just with the temple exploding, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's going to be like, believers. <laughs> It's totally um, going to be but, like but, the the new heart show ending, right? Like Vampiro wakes up in like bed with someone. He wakes up. He's in it's bed all with a striker. dream. Yeah, and it's just like <laughs> it was all a dream. Like Matt, I just had the craziest dream. <laughs> oh no, we just pan back from the temple, and there's just an Aztec temple behind it. <laughs> Hear that? Or like the whole place is time teleported to ancient Aztec times. It's just oh, like, you know, bum hey, rushed. We have the possibility to play with time, which is now fun and will be cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, All righty. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Garza, do you have anything else? Uh, no, not really. I think we touched everything. Okay. Uh, well, Chris, thank you again for coming on, sir. Thank you guys for having me, especially to bring out the red carpet and the all-star squad for, for the uh, midweek <laughs> war show. It's a, uh, I'm a big fan. I loved, I love you guys. I thank you guys for supporting the show and for at least talking about it, which is the best thing. Talk good about it, bad about it. I don't really care. It's just good that somebody's talking about it and that you guys are watching it and letting other people know about it. So thank you so much. And, uh, it's been it's been fun here. We're, we're, we've gone longer than Ultima Lucha at this point. So we're, we're, <laughs> yes, we did it. We are in what? we're in the ending montage right now. My recording just flipped two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was funny because uh, when we did the wrap up for the hundredth episode, I I had to tell Sorg. I'm like Sorg, you realize we've done a hundred episodes. <laughs> like, <laughs> Congratulations. Well, when and, you now, put and, it now, that and, and and now you have a mug to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> I do. And it is a great mug. <laughs> now 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 hopefully a panel in that ceiling opens and you shoot off to space to change to go change time. <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, I'm hey, really a time, hey. I'm a time traveling podcaster. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I did have our co-host for Awesome Cast take off like uh, like Iron Man on a green screen a little bit ago, so it's not outside the realm here, Mike. <laughs> we do have a Mayhem Show special effects department. We have not really unleashed to its full potential. <laughs> we should have when when we come back for Lucha Underground season four. We need to have like a green screen podcasters assemble. Like, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have to do. That. I already have like a foam hammer, so I can be the mule. I can be the Thor of the group. Cool, like, cool. I have a blonde wig somewhere. <laughs> do the same thing. I'll paint myself green. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then you won't. Then you won't be able to see anything because I'll be on the green. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just mess with the tinting. Yeah, you know, appreciate yeah. the dedication, but. <laughs> Yeah, we'll 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 uh, we'll put in Amen or somebody like that in that spot or somebody there one of those go. guys. Well, in well uh, I'm not sure if you've known this, but since we started, Amen has turned heel. Oh, really? Yes. A- Amen is a heel manager in a Fed in Texas. <laughs> is that uh, what's that wrestling Fed called? That, uh, here? Oh, uh, uh, not, I don't think it's an Inspire. It's not Inspire. It's, it's another Fed. Did he turn heel on you guys, or is he just heel in general? No, no, no. Because I actually I was in Texas uh, for a layover, and I did have a what a burger with him and his fiance. So, so he's water still burger, very nice. Wa- water burger is very good, by the yes. way. And uh, yeah, Garza, I'm jealous. And uh, yeah, um... <laughs> I do have well, like, two months away from me. <laughs> no, uh, but uh, yeah, the, uh, that's that's cool, man. Thanks for bringing me on with the All Star Squad, uh, Mainstream Matt. You're the man, Garza. I'm glad to see you. Uh, Mike and Sorg, I see you guys all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, just in case people don't know where to follow you, where can people find you on uh, on Twitter? Uh, at Krista Joseph, yeah, follow me on Twitter at there. Where, where do they Where do they find you guys? Oh, what stealing my catchphrase? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry, sorry. Oh. I'm a oh. fan. <laughs> 
I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yeah. Well, um, Sorg, where can they find you? Uh, you get a Sorg. <laughs> Right here on 1619 Broadway Avenue at the Sorgatron Media Studios, right on the train line and right up the street from our sponsor, Slice on Broadway. Uh, but no, uh, check out SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great, great shows, wrestling, non-wrestling. We're having a lot of fun uh, here from the new studios, and uh, you've probably seen all the pictures all over the place. Uh, and uh, if you are in the area, we are going to be watching TLC uh, here this Sunday, so please uh, join that and the main show, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We'll drop you right into that Facebook page, and we have a lot of great conversations. We had a masked wrestler on this week, so more Japanese uh, than than Lucha, but still, uh, I thought it was rather appropriate for the week. And uh, well, his name's Super Hentai. It, sure it is fitting. Super Hentai. So it, it, he'd fit in great in Lucha Underground. Yes, he would. <laughs> he, hey, he we have a recommendation. Tribe. <laughs> he could be. He could be. He could be. Uh, Chris, the, octopu- do- the octopus tribe. Uh, man, I, did you read my notes? <laughs> <laughs> it's, the hidden, it's the hidden eighth tribe that no one knew about because it's the octopus tribe. Is, uh, that is, is brilliant. This the Game of Thrones crossover? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I have a whole new set of links I need to send them after the show. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Matt, where can, where can people find you on the internet? All right. Well, thanks. Um, hey, at Mainstream Matt with one T. And um, I've been known to tweet about wrestling from time to time. And, Chris, it was great to catch up with you again. And um, please try to stay busy while you wait for season four. Yes, you too. <laughs> and uh, Garza, how about you? I'm still at DW Revolution or TheWrestlingRevolution.com. I constantly talk about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and of course, as always, you can catch me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machine. Oh, I, Mike, can I ask one question? Yeah, where did everybody rate Lucha Underground this week? Oh, numero uno. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. With a book, bo- we're not even gonna talk about the other shows. So it's, it's, it's kind of number it, one of the year. Yeah, yeah. like I, I'm sorry. Uh, this is this is late in the game. I should have apologized for this earlier. If you're here for the NXT or two hundred five five live report. They're okay. It was fine. We'll be back to them next week. <laughs> this was all about Lucha tonight. I don't even think Sorg watched the shows. I, I, well, I, I got to tell you, I did not. I started but did not complete either of the shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they were fine. But Lucha, this is Lucha week. This yeah. is Lucha week. It's Ultima Lucha 3. Hopefully, we do not have to wait too long for um, Ultima Lucha, uh, for Lucha Underground Season 4. And uh, who knows? I may just get randomly bored and start going through Netflix and just live tweet an episode of Lucha Underground. So go to at Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM for when I will most likely do that because I'll be damned if I'm going to watch Impact again. No, no, and I haven't (laughs) talked to him in the Ring of Honor yet, so. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We don't know what the third show is going to be. But if there is a third show, you better believe you'll catch it next week here on The Mid. We won!